Shut up, bro. I am gonna make it up. Not today. I'm sorry. Maybe not today, but bro, instantly on my ass. How you doing, though? I'm doing good as normal. I don't care. Um, 76 month listeners, let's go. Shout out to Tallinn, Estonia. Shout out to Dublin, Ireland. Shout out to Helsinki, Finland. Shout out to Minsk, Belarus. Shout out to Delhi, India. And, uh, and shout out to the other countries as well. Ow. That was a bit delayed. Pause! What? Pause for what? Six hearts, I'll take it. Oh, sh starting to fuck with your music. Help. That's what I'm saying, bro. He keeps seeing my for you page. He's starting to fuck with me. Join the dark side. That's what the sentence meant. What? Stay hydrated. Anyway, it's uh, Reaction Monday, so I'm going to wait for Raj to say Resident Sleeper and leave. <laughs> Alright, uh, where were we? I know Two years ago, I lost my faith in the black community. I no longer seen that. Check, tech DM. Break. Can. I? Wi-Fi. The new one. Yeah, there's another one. I saw the other one. Yeah. <laughs> How can anyone hate the rain? Oh God, they try to drown me in this hole. I cannot see. The rain? Yeah. Nah, rain is relaxing though. Nope, we said that one. Fuck. Where were we? Now a resident sleeper. Right. Nope. My bad. Hey, spam. Kind of forgot where we left off. I didn't mark. How you doing, spam? Did you see this one? I don't remember. Up and down? What does that mean? There's 
there's no point of fighting. What's the point? Why can't I red lantern? True. See you later. What? They just stopped beefing? Looks like you finally woke up. Why the fuck am I tied up? You have been gone for too long and I'm tired of waiting. You are getting your lazy ass back to making videos again. Come on, man. Can't I just enjoy my vacation? You mean your one year vacation in Japan? If it wasn't for me and your whole fan base, you would have been able to afford that expensive ass vacation. You living off the money we made for you. We put this whole shit brick by brick watching your videos. And now you want to whore us out? Dude, I have a life. Nigga, what life? You ain't got no bitch, you ain't got no kids, and you definitely got no 9 to 5! I know with these excuses! Can't you see that I'm burnt out and tired from doing this all the time? There's no way you're tired from playing video games two hours a week! But you forgot about the editing! That shit takes a lot of time to do! Don't you pay somebody to do that for you? Damn it, why did I tell you all that? Wait, so all I gotta do is make one more video? And you let me go? One video? For all the times I waited? Nigga, you're making a whole series of videos on some One Piece type shit. Oh, hell nah. You tweaking if you think I'm gonna make a whole series of gameplays. You got me fucked up. <laughs> oh, bitch, I'll smack out all the teeth you have left in that raggedy ass mouth. Do not Damn. play with me. Now here's how it's gonna go nah, down. That's fucked you're up. gonna play the new Fab Nights at Freddy's while I record you. Wait, hold up. Fab Nights at Freddy's? Ain't that like a porn game? Oh, I said you're gonna play the new Fab Nights at Freddy's while I record you, and you ain't gonna stop playing until I say so. Now do the intro. Is he gonna Sub be YouTube, naked? What's going on, Corey Kitchen here, and welcome. More enthusiasm, nigga. Sub YouTube, what's going on, Corey Kitchen here, and welcome. Yeah, I'm so hard right now. <laughs> I'm in for real, bro. He taking a long ass vacation. That's obviously edited. What? NBA thumbnails. Yeah, like, bro, what? No, that seems possible. Crazy song, though. <laughs> it's real. I saw that. I was there. Okay. Yo. 
Every crocodile escapes during NBA. Yeah, that, that's so real. I think I heard it in, in, in the news. <laughs> bro, yeah, these dumb nails, bro. Like, what? Fuck. How do you even get a car there? Mr. Beast is a fucking pussy, bro. Like, why the fuck are you posting another random ass video instead of responding to the allegations? And bro is still removing negative comments from his fucking video, bro. <clears throat> oh, we need Chandler. Oh, Chandler's the greatest. Bro, how much did y'all get paid to say this shit, bro? And bro, honestly, it's just not the same anymore, bro. They glazing over Because back Chandler. in the days when I would watch a Mr. Beast video, I would be <clears throat> leaking, bro. Now, when I watch this shit, Shit is so mid, bro. Joining we all know what Mr. Beast has done, bro. And that shit is gonna More be in the back of my mind 24-7. So how the fuck am I supposed to focus on the video if I'm being reminded constantly of the shit he's done? Please, Mr. Beast, please tell us everything is fake, bro. Please tell us that they're wrong. I want to be able to watch your videos again, man. True. The EU hates Apple. They famously forced them to switch from Lightning to USB Type-C. Then they were like, yeah, it's kind of messed up that users have to use your App Store and only your App Store, so we're going to force you to allow side loading. But those were just the regulations I've already heard about. Well, I've been in Germany the past couple of days, and it goes even deeper. Whenever I open literally Gosh. any app, it pops up with this menu. Listen, before you use the app, just know they're collecting, storing, and selling your data. Just so you know. This is a part of their general data protection regulation, and uh, I don't like it. I'm gonna hate you guys I, had way. I don't need you to remind yeah. me that they're selling my data. Call me a stupid American, but I don't like these regulations. Like, I went to McDonald's here and got a 20-piece, and it tasted like natural, like real chicken. I don't want that. What? Uh, KSI. Scam guy, Logan... We have posts and you saw the shadow of Mr. Beast. Wait, why he say I don't like these regulations. Like I went to McDonald's here and got a 20 piece and it tasted like natural, like real chicken. I don't want that. He wants American uh non chicken chicken. Nah. Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I think that's supposed to be his pocket or something. But yeah, that's sus. How's that bad? How's that cursed? Yo. Wait. If I'm not wrong, I feel like I had a... When I was a kid and I saw that, I had a nightmare. That was kind of scary. Or the uh, the uh, Dracula or some shit. Termu nahast väri parmastust. Nii et kui raseeri nusaldan veenust, uue kaua kestva skin cushion tehnoloogiaga, mis aitab kaitsta mu nahka ärrituse eest. Ja paksemate karvade ja tundlikuma naha korral seal all, veenus intiim piirkonna jaoks. Minu nahk, minu valik. Veenus. Aga mida kauem riid, et pesemist ootavad, seda rohkem plekid sisse kuivavad. Ari Elektra Clean Kapsel plekki eemalduse jõuga. Eemaldab mustuse, nii et masina teisi riideid on laitmatult puhtad ja lõhnavad fantastiliselt värskelt. Ari Elektra Clean. Hoia lastele kätte saamatus kohas. Forbidden Candy. The fall of France in 1940 during World War II is one of the most humiliating defeats in modern history. At the time, France was seen as a military powerhouse, fortified by the Maginot Line and prepared for a prolonged conflict with Germany. However, the Germans used blitzkrieg tactics, bypassing the Maginot Line through the Ardennes, a region France had wrongly considered impassable. This strategic blunder allowed German forces to quickly outflank French and British troops. In just weeks, the French military crumbled under the speed and coordination of the German assault. The British evacuated at Dunkirk and German forces entered Paris on June 14th. By June 22nd, France had officially surrendered, resulting in the occupation of the northern region and the establishment of the Vichy regime in the south. The defeat shattered France's status as a global power, 
leaving Britain to stand alone against Germany. The speed of the collapse, combined with the internal divisions that followed, marked a deeply humiliating chapter for France during the war. Russo-Japanese War The Russo-Japanese War was a humiliating defeat for Russia, marking the first time an Asian power defeated a European empire in modern history. The conflict stemmed from competing ambitions over Korea and Manchuria. Russia, a major global power, underestimated Japan, which had rapidly modernized its military. The war began with a surprise Japanese attack on Port Arthur, and Japan consistently outperformed Russia on land and sea. The turning point came at the Battle of Tsushima, where Japan annihilated the Russian Baltic fleet, a devastating loss for Russia's naval ambitions. This defeat exposed deep flaws in Russia's military and government, fueling unrest at home and contributing to the 1905 revolution. Internationally, Japan emerged as a major power, securing control over Korea and parts of Manchuria. The Treaty yeah. of Portsmouth, brokered by U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt, ended the war, with Japan gaining significant territorial and strategic advantages. Russia's loss not only diminished its influence in Asia, but also dealt a severe blow to its global prestige and credibility. Vietnam War The Vietnam War oh, yeah. is one of the most humiliating defeats in U.S. history. The U.S. entered Classic. the conflict to prevent the spread of communism in Southeast Asia, supporting South Vietnam against North Vietnam and the Viet Cong. Initially providing aid and advisors, U.S. involvement escalated after the Gulf of Tonkin incident in 1964. Despite superior firepower and resources, the U.S. struggled against guerrilla tactics, dense jungle terrain, and unfamiliar local conditions. North Vietnam's determination, coupled with support from the Soviet Union and China, allowed them to fight a war of attrition that the U.S. was ill-prepared to sustain. As the war dragged on, U.S. casualties increased and public opinion turned sharply against the conflict, especially after the 1968 Tet Offensive. Protests, the My Lai Massacre, and growing dissatisfaction at home made the war politically untenable. By 1973, the Paris Peace Accords led to the withdrawal of U.S. forces, but in 1975, North Vietnam captured Saigon, marking the end of the war. The fall of Saigon, with images of U.S. personnel evacuating, symbolized the humiliating end of U.S. involvement. Despite vast expenditures and heavy casualties, the U.S. failed to stop communism spread in Vietnam. The war left the U.S. bitterly divided, suffering over 58,000 deaths, and marked a low point in U.S. foreign policy, contributing to what became known as the Vietnam Syndrome. The defeat severely damaged U.S. prestige PTSD. and confidence in its military and political leadership. The Soviet-Afghan War The Soviet-Afghan War was a significant and humiliating defeat for the Soviet Union, playing a major role in its eventual collapse. The Soviets intervened to support the communist government of Afghanistan, oh, yeah, Afghanistan expecting a swift victory against the Mujahideen insurgents. However, the war became a protracted conflict that lasted a decade, with the Soviet military struggling to adapt to the guerrilla tactics of the Mujahideen, who were well-versed <clears throat> in the mountainous terrain. The Mujahideen, backed by the U.S., Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and others, used hit-and-run tactics, making Soviet reliance on heavy artillery, tanks, and airstrikes ineffective. Afghan resistance was bolstered by religious and nationalist fervor, with many civilians viewing the Soviets as foreign invaders. Brutal tactics by Soviet forces, including the destruction of villages and civilian casualties, only deepened local opposition. The war also drained the already struggling Soviet economy, costing billions and stretching resources thin. By 1985, Mikhail Gorbachev, facing mounting economic... Parfümi oli tehnoloogiaga Lenori parfümiteraapia. Toob sulle intensiivse lõhna. Nuts. Gambling as, of course. ...economic and political pressure recognized the war's futility, calling Afghanistan a bleeding wound and initiating a withdrawal. In 1988, the Geneva Accords were signed and Soviet troops began pulling out, completing their withdrawal by February 1989. Shortly after their departure, the Afghan government they had propped up fell, and the Mujahideen took control of the country. The Soviet defeat severely weakened its global standing. Battle of the Granicus The Battle of the Granicus was a decisive and humiliating defeat for the Persian Empire at the hands of Alexander the Great. Oh, yeah. Persian forces, confident in their numbers and terrain advantage, positioned themselves along the river to block Alexander's advance. Ignoring advice for caution, the Persians engaged Alexander directly expecting to overwhelm his forces during the river crossing. 
Alexander's bold assault, however, overpowered the Persian cavalry and slaughtered the Greek mercenaries backing them. This defeat shattered Persian confidence and opened Asia Minor to Alexander, marking the beginning of the empire's decline and his unstoppable conquest. The Emu War The Emu War was an unusual and somewhat humorous conflict that took yeah. place in Australia in late 1932. The war was Lost essentially a pest control operation carried out by the Australian military against a large population of emus. After World War I, many Australian soldiers were given land in Western Australia to farm. However, by the early 1930s, the Great Depression had hit, and these farmers were struggling with poor soil, drought, and falling wheat prices. To make matters worse, an estimated 20,000 emus migrated from inland areas to the coast, drawn by the conditions on me? the newly Ooh. established farms. The emus, Fuck finding off. the farms a source of food and water, began to ravage the crops, causing significant damage and losses for the farmers. In response to the farmers' pleas for help, the Australian government decided to deploy military resources. Major GPW Meredith of the Royal Australian Artillery was put in charge of the operation, oh, which skin. involved soldiers armed with two Lewis machine guns and 10,000 rounds of ammunition. The goal was to cull the emu population and reduce the damage they were causing. The campaign began in November 1932, but the emus proved to be surprisingly elusive and resilient. The birds were fast and had an uncanny ability to scatter and evade the machine gun fire. Over several days of attempts, only a small number of emus were killed, while the majority escaped unharmed. The, the operation became increasingly challenging, as the emus quickly adapted to the presence of the soldiers and the weapons. The military operation was eventually called off after a few weeks, with the soldiers having killed only a few hundred emus out of the thousands that were causing problems. The campaign was widely regarded as a failure and it became a subject of ridicule in Just the press. Keep them, the government decided well. that the EMUs were too difficult to control using military means, and instead, Bombit. they offered a bounty system to encourage hunters to cull the birds. I knew all of them, though. But roughly. During Great Depression. Which defeat was the most humiliating? It's either USA or Australia. I'll say USA. <sighs> of course. Yeah, I don't know why. Why is it so cursed? And then if I go and I click, saavuta brauniga kaua kestvalt sile nahk kodust lahkumata. Eemalda karvad nii nagu ise saavid. Tagab sile ta naha üheks aastaks. Soovid isegi bikini piirkonnas. Või tee valik meie epilaatorite seast, mis eemaldavad ka kõige lühemad karvad, mida vaha eemaldada ei suuda. Braun! Uus Head and Shoulders kuni 100% kõmavaba. Zia Dynasty. The Zia Dynasty is traditionally considered the first dynasty in Chinese history, though its existence is a subject of debate among historians due to the lack of contemporary written records. It is often regarded as a semi-mythical period that laid the foundational aspects of Chinese civilization. Shang Dynasty. The Shang Dynasty is the first historically confirmed Chinese dynasty, known for significant advancements in bronze casting, the development of early Chinese writing systems, and the establishment of urban centers that became the bedrock of later Chinese culture, Zhou Dynasty. The Zhou Dynasty was a long-lasting dynasty that is split into two distinct periods, the Western Zhou and the Eastern Zhou. The latter is further divided into the Spring and Autumn period hey, and the Mystic. Warring States period, both of which were marked doing? by philosophical and intellectual developments that shaped Chinese thought, including the emergence of Confucianism and Taoism. Qin Dynasty the Qin Dynasty was the first dynasty to Say successfully man. unify hey. the various warring states under doing? a central imperial authority, establishing the foundation At of the, the imperial time, huh? system that would dominate China for over two millennia. The dynasty is also known for the construction of the Great Wall and the Terracotta Army, Han Dynasty. The Han Dynasty is often considered a golden age in Chinese history, 
characterized by significant. That's what's up. I'm good as well. Mystic. We didn't say how you don't. Cultural, technological, and political advancements. The Han period saw the solidification of the Confucian bureaucracy, the expansion of the Fair. Silk Road, and the development of a strong central government that became a model for future dynasties. Three Kingdoms following the collapse of the Han Dynasty, China entered nice. a period of fragmentation known as the Three Kingdoms period. During this time, yeah, the kingdoms. kingdoms of Wei, Shu, and Wu vied for control, leading to a time of intense warfare and cultural development that has been immortalized in Chinese literature and All popular right. culture. Jin Dynasty. The Jin Dynasty briefly unified China at I was thinking today, but kind of late now. Um, I'm not sure when. Tomorrow? If I have time, tomorrow. So I'll start two hours early. Maybe. <laughs> After the Three Kingdoms period, but internal strife and external pressures eventually led to its division into Eastern and Western Jin. This period was marked by both cultural flourishing and political instability. Southern and Northern dynasties. This period of division was characterized by a North-South divide, with various dynasties ruling in the Northern and Southern regions of China. Despite the political fragmentation, this era saw significant cultural and religious developments, including the spread of Buddhism in China. The Sui dynasty. I mean, we can do the same thing as before, just do two hours to think that I was supposed to do that day and then continue the normal day. The Sui Dynasty ruling China from 581 to 618 was a short-lived but pivotal era. Founded by Emperor Wen and his son Yang, it Wen. reunified the country after centuries of division. The Sui Dynasty laid the groundwork for the subsequent Tang Dynasty's prosperity implementing key reforms and initiating large-scale construction projects, including the Grand Canal, facilitating transportation and trade. Yep. The Tang Dynasty. The Tang Dynasty, ruling China from 618 to 907 AD, was a prosperous era known for cultural achievements and economic growth. Under leaders like Emperor Taizong and Empress Wu Zetian, the dynasty expanded territory along the Silk Road and embraced Buddhism. Advances in poetry, art, and technology flourished, including the invention of woodblock printing. Uh, Brockberger, didn't you hear what I just said? I'll do two hours of this just in a uh, day. Tomorrow. And then I'll continue the AI stream. Brockberger. However, internal rebellions and external pressures led to its decline and eventual fall in the early 10th century. Maybe read my full message. I read your full message. Matasaka. Do you say pressure? What? I was late because I was in a pressure. Yeah. Fuck. <sighs> what? five dynasties, and ten kingdoms. Following the fall of the Tang Dynasty, China entered a period of political <laughs> fragmentation yeah, known as the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms bad. period. This era was marked by short-lived dynasties and independent kingdoms, leading to a time of instability and regional conflict. The Song Dynasty. Northern Song Dynasty. The dynasty was founded by Emperor Taizu of Song, who reunited China after a period of fragmentation known as the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period. The capital was initially in Bianjing. The Northern Song was marked by a strong centralized China bureaucracy, Lord. with power concentrated in the hands of the emperor and his officials. The civil service examination system, which selected government officials based on merit rather than birth, was further developed and became a central feature of the administration. Southern Song Dynasty. The Southern Song began after the Jurchen-led Jin Dynasty conquered the northern half of the empire, forcing the Song court to retreat south of the Yangtze River and establish a new capital at Lin'an. Despite losing significant territory, the Southern Song maintained a strong economy 
and continued to innovate in technology and culture. The dynasty is particularly known for its advances in shipbuilding and navigation, which supported a thriving maritime trade network extending as far as Southeast Asia and the Indian Ocean. Yuan Dynasty The Yuan Dynasty was a pivotal period in Chinese history, yeah, marking the first time China was ruled by a non-Han ethnic group, the Mongols. Founded by Kublai Khan, grandson of Genghis Khan, the Yuan Dynasty what? represented the height of Why Mongol power, blackface? with a vast empire stretching across much of Asia. Under Yuan rule, China experienced both continuity and change. The Mongols maintained many traditional Chinese institutions, but also introduced their own governance practices, often favoring Mongols and other non-Han ethnic groups in administration. The dynasty's capital was established in present-day Beijing, then called Dadu. The Dadu. Yuan era was significant for its cultural and economic exchanges, as the empire connected east and west along the Silk Road, facilitating trade, the spread of ideas, and technological innovations. However, the dynasty struggled with internal strife, corruption, and widespread resentment among the Han Chinese population, leading to numerous uprisings. By the mid-14th century, these internal problems, along with natural disasters and economic decline, weakened the Yuan dynasty. It eventually fell in 1368 when Zhu Yuan Zhang, a former monk, led a successful rebellion and established the Ming Dynasty, restoring Han Chinese rule over China. The Ming Dynasty The Ming Dynasty ruled China from 1368 to 1644. It was established by Emperor Hong Wu and is known for its stability, economic prosperity, and cultural achievements. Also, the Great Wall of China was rebuilt during this time. And the Ming Dynasty is also famous for its maritime expeditions led by Zheng He. However, yeah. internal strife, economic issues, and external threats contributed to its decline, leading to the establishment of the Qing Dynasty in 1644. The Qing Dynasty. The Ch it was cool when uh, Spam did it, but uh, you kind of ruined it. I ain't gonna lie. Qing Dynasty was the last imperial dynasty in China, ruling from 1644 to 1912. It was established by the Manchu people after they overthrew the Ming Dynasty. The Qing Dynasty <laughs> expanded <laughs> China's territory, reaching its greatest extent under Emperor Kangxi and Qianlong. Country However, is internal okay. issues, including corruption and resistance to foreign influence, contributed to its decline. The dynasty faced challenges like the Opium Wars and the Taiping Rebellion, and in 1912, the Qing Dynasty fell with the establishment of the Republic of China. Republic of China the Republic of China was founded after the fall of the Qing Dynasty and was marked by a tumultuous period of warlordism, Japanese invasion during World War II, and civil war between the nationalists and communists. Oh, in 1949, the Communist Party Political established Marxist the People's Republic of China on the mainland, while the nationalist government retreated to Taiwan. And that's all. Tell me in the comments which country you want me to tell its full history. And this is the entire history of China in time. one picture. You know, in here we we all have Alzheimer's. We all got dementia. It just runs on the stream. Hobuses eelas tagurvidi ratsutamine näib raske, kui tegelikult vajad vaid parfüümi kvaliteediga Old Spice kolm ühes dushikeeli, et saada mehelikud lõhnad juustele, kehale ja näole kõik koos. Mees, sa lõhnad hästi. Lenor esitleb. Kas pesule on võimalik anda välisõhu värskust linna selades? Nüüd on see palju lihtsam tänu uuendustele Lenorilt. Kasuta Lenor Fresh Air Effekti ja saa pesu, mis on sama värske nagu õues kuivatatud. Proovi meie parimat värskust. NATO, the North Atlantic... I don't know. That's how they did it. I'm, I mean, it's Reaction Monday. I'm just following uh, what we have in order. Atlantic Treaty Organization is a military alliance established in 1949 to provide collective security against the threat posed by the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Initially, it included 12 member countries, the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Italy, and Portugal. The foundational principle of NATO is collective defense, enshrined in Article 5 of the NATO Treaty, which states that an armed attack against one member is considered an attack against all members, yep. obligating them to respond collectively. 
After the Cold War ended with the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, NATO adapted to new security challenges. By 2024, NATO had grown to include 31 member countries, with North Macedonia being one of the latest additions. BRICS. BRICS is an acronym for five Brick major the... emerging economies, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The group was originally oh, known as BRIC know before that. the inclusion of South Africa in 2010. These countries are known for their significant influence hmm. on regional and global affairs and are distinguished by their large, fast-growing economies. Collectively, BRICS nations cover over 26% of the world's land area and are home to more than 40% of the global population. I thought India hate China. I guess bricked up for what? Economically, they represent about a quarter of the global GDP. The BRICS countries hold annual summits to discuss various issues such as economic cooperation, political coordination, yeah. and cultural exchange. It's interesting they're working together in some way. The BRICS countries also emphasize the need for a multipolar world order, where no single country or group of countries has dominance over global affairs. This approach is seen as a counterbalance to the dominance of Western countries and institutions. Despite their differences in political systems and economic structures, the BRICS countries share a common goal of fostering inclusive growth and sustainable development. The Allied Powers In World War I, the main Allied Powers were the United Kingdom, France, and Russia. These countries formed the backbone of the alliance that fought against Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. The United yeah. States joined the Allies in 1917, providing crucial support that helped tip the balance in favor of the Allies. Italy, initially part of the Triple Alliance with Germany and Austria-Hungary, switched sides to join the Allies in 1915. The war ended with the defeat of the Central Powers and the signing of the Treaty of Versailles in 1919. In World War II, the major Allied powers included the United States, the United Kingdom, Fact the segment. Soviet Union, and China. France was also a key member until its defeat by Germany in 1940, after which the Free French forces continued to fight alongside the Allies. These countries joined forces to combat the aggression of the Axis powers, which included Germany, Italy, and Japan. Significant battles and campaigns, such as D-Day and the Battle of Stalingrad, marked the Allied efforts. The war ended with the unconditional surrender of Germany in May 1945 and Japan in September 1945. The Axis powers. Germany, led by the Number Austrian painter uh, 16. and his party, was the primary force behind the Axis powers. The Austrian painter sought to dominate what? Europe, overturn the Treaty of Versailles, and establish a greater German empire. Germany's aggressive mm. expansion began with the annexation Broke of Club Austria Penguin and the invasion crazy, of Czechoslovakia, bro, culminating fuck? in the invasion of Poland in 1939, no. which triggered World War II. Italy, under the leadership mm. of Benito Mussolini and his fascist regime, sought to create a new Roman Empire in the Mediterranean and Africa. Japan, governed by a militaristic government and Emperor Hirohito, aimed to dominate Asia and the Pacific. Japan's expansionist activities included the invasion of China in the 1930s and the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, which okay. led to the United States joining the war. The Axis powers were bound by several agreements, yeah, including the Tripartite Pact of 1940, which formalized their military alliance. Italy was Despite not initial successes, the Axis powers faced mounting resistance from the Allies, including significant defeats such as the Battle of Stalingrad and the D-Day invasion. The Axis powers began to crumble in 1943 with Italy's surrender and continued with Germany's defeat Classic in May Italy. 1945, followed by Japan's surrender in September 1945. The Warsaw Pact. The Warsaw Pact, officially known as the Treaty of Friendship, Cooperation, Yay, and Mutual Assistance, friendship. was a military alliance established in 1955 by the Soviet Union and seven Eastern European countries, Albania, which withdrew in 1968, what? Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, East Germany, Zero. Hungary, Poland, and Romania. The alliance was created in response to the formation of NATO and the integration of West Germany into NATO. Throughout its existence, the Warsaw Pact played a significant role in Cold War Your geopolitics. Country. It was involved in key events such as the suppression of the Hungarian Revolution in 1956 and yeah. the Prague Spring in Czechoslovakia in 1968, where Warsaw Pact forces intervened to crush attempts at liberalization 
and maintain Soviet control. As the Cold War drew to a close, the influence of the Warsaw Pact waned. In 1991, following the collapse of communist regimes across Eastern Europe and the disintegration of the Soviet Union, the Warsaw Pact was formally disbanded. The UN, the United Nations, aka the joke. The European Union. The European Union is a political and economic union of European countries established to foster closer economic and political integration among its member states. It began as the European Coal and Steel Community in 1951 and evolved into the EU with the Maastricht Treaty in 1993. The EU aims to promote economic cooperation, ensure political nah, stability, Estonia, and though. enhance the quality of life for its citizens. It currently includes 27 like member opinion. countries, which collaborate on a wide range of issues, including trade, environmental protection, and security. The EU has its own institutions to manage these responsibilities. European Commission, European... Par you know what? I'm saying cats are cute and uh, kids are not cute at all. There you go. Parliament, Council of the EU, European Council, Court of Justice of the European Union, ASEAN. The Association of Southeast Us. Asian Nations is a regional organization founded in yeah. 1967 to promote political and economic cooperation among countries in Southeast Asia. Established by of Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand, ASEAN now includes 10 member countries. Brunei, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Malaysia, oh. the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, and Indonesia. ASEAN's primary goals are to enhance regional stability, promote economic growth, and Balance. foster cultural and social ties among its member states. OIC, the Organization of Islamic OIC. Cooperation, is an international organization founded in 1969, consisting of 57 yes. member states, which collectively represent over 1.8 billion Muslims worldwide. The OIC yeah. aims to promote and safeguard the interests of the Muslim world. The organization... Opinions on... Sebastian from Pressure? Uh, I guess he's cool. Organization was established in response to the arson attack on the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem with the goal of uniting Muslim countries and fostering solidarity among them. Additionally, the OIC seeks to safeguard and protect the holy sites of Islam, support the struggle of the Palestinian people, and combat Islamophobia. Which Italy do you prefer? <laughs> no Italy. I'd say Roman. Yeah. Gotta be. This characters. If you say so. It's because you would prefer to rule the world. Probably USA. Yeah. Last one, Madagascar. Why? Which Turkey do you prefer? Ottoman. Yo. No, Turkey is crazy. 24%. What's wrong with Turkish people? Which China do you prefer? Qing Dynasty. What? That was a vibe. I guess no China. What Japan do you prefer? I'm guessing people picked modern though. I mean, uh, yeah. bro, Nazi is crazy though. I should have picked no Japan. 
Which career do you prefer? No career. Oh. Career and Empire. Madness Combat Characters. As cats. Hank. Hank is a good pet for chasing rodents and flies. He is not all that friendly and will bite you when he's angry. Huh. But he apologizes through morning rubs and purrs. Dimos. Dimos is a lazy cat who spends most of his time napping the day He's away. He's a cool cat. He enjoys sitting on laps and loves to be given scratches behind the ear. He can be a little rude and disruptive when he craves attention. 2019. Sanford. Sanford is the friendliest cat out of the three. He is very playful, being a good pet for active people. Giving him a bath can be hard, so giving him a toy or a treat will help keep him still. Madness Combat Characters as Cat Part 3 More Sheriff Sheriff is quite literally the embodiment of the term scaredy cat. He is easily frightened by loud sounds and experiences separation anxiety. Sheriff is a bit dopey, but this can be rather charming to watch. To Pam Doc. Doc is a pretty intelligent cat whose smarts make him very trainable. He is capable of doing small demands and understands more words than the average cat. He appreciates someone who can keep his smart brain thinking with toys. Bobo. Bobos is your stereotypical egotistical cat who feels superior. Your lap is his throne, and he won't tolerate you moving when he sits down. Bobos is very hard to please, and seems to be the real owner. <laughs> Madness Combat Characters at Cats Part 4. I guess. Fan Characters Edition. Happy this is funny, though. A.K.A. Skittles. Skittles is without a doubt the sweetest and safest Mad Tom cat to encounter. He's the most affectionate cat. Expect lots of gifts, furs, and tummy massages. Due to his innocent nature, he's blind to dangerous situations. So keep an eye on him with other cats. Rainbow Hank equals and Wonk. A.K.A. Pink Hank and White Hank. All Hank cats are natural killers and are great hunters, but their coldness makes them dangerous. Hank cats do not get along, their territorial behavior prevents them from sharing a provider. Hank cats will fight each other to the death. If you like a little danger, you and Hank cats are a match made in hell. That's cool. <laughs> what the fuck? I got dark real quick. Madness as cats. I think I missed part two. Is this part two? Madness there combat you go. characters as cats. I knew I missed part some. two. Auditor. Auditor is hard to catch and even harder to keep. He's very cold. He looks he the likes coolest. to watch humans from afar and has never been heard me out. The nicest thing he can do is let you hold him for a second before striking. Jabba's. Despite having a rough appearance, Jeb is well mannered. He is very responsible over his litter and keeping the house clean. If you treat him well, Jeb can be a loyal, obedient, and helpful companion. Mm. 
Mm, Jebus might be the best one. As his name suggests, he is one of the hardest cats to own. He's cute, but he does what he wants, destroying your thing or biting you randomly. Controlling and dangerous. Even playing can be violent with a tricky cat. Lenor Esitleb. Kas pesule on võimalik anda välisõhu värskust linna sellest? Nüüd on see palju lihtsam. Tänu uuendustele Lenorilt. Kasuta Lenor Fresh Air efekti ja saa pesu, mis on sama värske nagu õues kulvatud. Proovi meie parimat värskust. Two steps ahead. What is this? I am always two steps ahead. This has been the greatest social experiment of my entire life. It's alluring, it's compelling, it's gripping to observe all these unwell, disoriented beings roam the internet in search of stories. Is that the whole ideas? Rivalries where they feel encouraged I'm and good. engaged. Hobuse seljas tagurvidi ratsutamine näib raske, kui tegelikult vajad vaid parfüümi kvaliteediga Old Spice kolm ühes dushigeeli, et saada mehelikud lõhnad juustele, kehale ja näole kõik koos. Mees sõlõhna hästi. Lenor esitleb, kas pesule on võimalik anda välisõhu värskust linna seladest? Nüüd on see palju lihtsam tänu uuendustele Lenorilt. Kasuta Lenor Freshi efekti ja saa pesu, mis on sama värske nagu õues kuivatatud. Proovi meie parimat värskust. The iPhone 16 is the latest oh. in a long line of iPhone. Wait, it's a moon video. Have you seen it? Phones that have done absolutely nothing to innovate. It's a calculated trick by a company that knows its audience will eat up whatever they place in front of them. Saving their true upgrades for later on, Apple is just stringing people along trying to squeeze everything they can out of their customer base. So let's dive into just how far Apple has fallen behind I don't and think why they I found Moon on your recommended. Hey. I'll take a moon video. Business model means they don't really have to care. Smartphones are pretty much essential today, and this year Apple beats out all their competitors for the top spots. People know what they're getting and they know the brand. It's this idea of comfort that makes them sell. People suddenly aren't buying iPhones for the specs. Apple's real development is going into things that we won't see perfected for a while, like the Vision Pro yeah. and their progress towards AR glasses, along with buying up every AR company under the sun and trying to make sure they're at the top of the AI revolution. I mean, when you look at the actual products rather than the brands, it very quickly becomes clear they're just trying to cash in. They've made slight changes and called them improvements, whilst other manufacturers have made actual attempts to innovate. Yep. I mean, for the price of $1,000, you can now just get the slightly updated iPhone 16 Pro, all for a slightly larger display, a slightly larger battery, a slightly new color, a slightly faster chip, and slight camera improvements. Slight. Once again, the new iPhone is just a slightly upgraded version of the last, with no new innovation or impact. So it's no surprise comments have been pouring in after the event, talking about how boring it really was, marking Apple's 2024 event as being just yet another nothing bugger. But before we continue, I want to tell you about War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game model. Chloe, the new order that I intends. Uh. Yeah, I don't like War Thunder either. Every vehicle is Ow. intricately designed, down to its engines, fuel tanks, and crew, all susceptible to damage I mean, from enemy bag fire. Is a bag, Watching though, I don't Oars, blame the X-ray view shows you exactly how they now release their own versions of a folding phone. While some might think of this as a gimmick, the fact that Samsung are on their sixth version shows there's enough of a market for them. And the benefits do seem clear, as you're pretty much able to double the size of your screen without sacrificing being able to fit it in your pockets. Now, there's still some work to do on making them thinner and more durable. For lots of people, the screens suddenly crack for no reason. Then there's the creep which still gets in the way and keeps a lot of people from buying yeah, that's The price tag is probably break. the biggest problem though, which is the main reason most people won't pick one up. The Google oh, Pixel no. sells for around $1,600 to $1,750, which is way too much for most people to spend on a phone. Apple has stayed completely clear of this. Parfümi oli tehnoloogia ka Lenori parfümiteraapia. Toob sulle intensiivse lõhna. And we get Gamba. FBI, open up! Strong as a brick, yeah. 
this. With the Nuts. premium, people are willing to pay for them. They could easily charge more than enough to make 1K it worth their while. Insane. But with the problem still there, Apple hasn't wanted to risk staining their brand with a poor product. That's the draw of Apple, their entire brand. People trust them to deliver stable products. But as we've seen, no there's a difference between stability and stagnation. Apple's greatest trick has been how they've created the perfect way to drip feed their products to the masses. Planned obsolescence in tech is so common today, it's really hard to even find something that won't break after a couple of years. Apple's no different. In fact, they're the masters of it. They know most of their customers are on a two to three year cycle. They pretty much have to be. They need to buy a new phone once their current one just stops working, making them feel slick and high quality. Bro, they just have to buy a new one. The sky is way too close to the sun. They've been caught directly interfering to speed up this process before. In 2016, people got suspicious when their older iPhones started switching themselves off once they reached 30% battery. Apple said they fixed this in a software update, but it was all just smoke and mirrors. The updates fixed the bug, but they also forced the phones to work harder and eat up more power. Over time, it made them feel slower and drained their batteries even more. Yeah. But I'm so sour on Apple because of what they did with the batteries. Yeah. That was such a dirty thing to me because everybody had always suspected, like my friend Brian was always like, dude, I'm telling you, when the new phones come out, your old phone starts moving slower. I'm like, dude, yeah. that's a conspiracy. That's all horseshit. Yeah. I'm like, your phone's just old, bro. But then when I found out that it was real, mm -hmm. I was like, you assholes. Mm. And <laughs> to pretend. The problem, the problem was the way they didn't tell what? people. Often this is how it works. Logan Paul is like moist. What? because it keeps Apple out of the courts. When the phone slows down, people think it's just because it's old, not because it's being sapped out of its remaining lifespan. Then when they upgrade and the phone can handle new updates, the problem suddenly disappears and they get rewarded for buying J something. Another one. Today it's subtler, but not really any different. They're still up to the same tricks. In fact, they've even got. Oh, some Joe, wasn't it Joe? Literally, Nikia. his name People was People still Joe. have their phones suddenly die after. A And we get another nuts gamble. Nice. Few years, showing that a high price doesn't always guarantee high quality. One way to get around. Yeah, Joe Rogan. Yeah, I was thinking like Joe what? Joe Rogan. Yeah. Obsolescence and forced upgrades is to switch out parts. If the battery starts dying or the screen loses its edge, you can easily just. <laughs> you was, you saw a gamble ad. You gambled 500 and you won. Oh wow replace it. But over time, this has only gotten harder and harder to do. Today, they use a mixture of custom seals, glues, and modular non-standard screws to hold the phone together. You actually used to be able to buy a kit online and do it yourself with a screwdriver and a pair of tweezers. Now you need to take it to a repair shop, a licensed one. Or if you go to an official Apple store, it's even worse. People often have stories of taking their iPhone in for repairs, only to find out that it'll be much quicker and cheaper just to buy a new one instead. All because they've inflated the price so much. They try to stop people using third-party repair shops as well. If some iPhones detect replacement parts, they start blocking off features to try and get you to upgrade instead. Replacement batteries yeah, don't by watching just like the normal lean points show the health in the settings and the third party screens can't use the tone feature that responds to light levels they did recently announce that they'll actually be ending these practices but it does seem a little too late apple is still a company Veri peseb kaks korda rohkem nõusid, kui oleks siit arvanud. Veri, veri taistiliselt säästlik. Chloe, the new of the fine tents. that demands your loyalty and punishes you for buying any other products. The key is the iPhone. They've always focused on making it the most premium product on the market. As we've seen with the iPhone 16, it's not really true anymore, but it would take a lot more stagnation for their fans to wake up. If you buy in, Apple has a bunch of different ways to make you buy all of their other tech as well. Lots of these have already been banned. Others are the subject Good. of an upcoming legal battle. Right now, an anti-monopoly lawsuit from the US's Department of Justice is in the works. It alleges that Apple has specifically made it so that their products don't work with other brands. And there's a bunch of examples, like Such the way that scam. Apple watches don't properly work with other smartphones. They technically do, but most of the features don't work, so there really isn't much point. Apple had to be legally forced to let third-party app stores onto their 
their device in 2022, the EU demanded Crazy. that they let people use things other than the App Store. As we've seen in the past, it lets them block apps from being downloaded and punish other developers when they step out of line. It's what Epic That's Games sued them over user. in 2020. Apple and the maker of Yo. Fortnite, Epic Games, will battle it out in court today in a lawsuit that could change how millions of iPhone users download apps. The developer claims Apple is monopolizing mobile gaming through its App Store. Even the green bubbles that give messages that don't come through iMessage are part of the strategy. Get on Apple doors, you can't have anything else. Buy more Apple, yeah. That's such a scammer. Is furniture crazy. Yeah, Fortnite. <laughs> Strategy, as it makes them seem inferior. So much of Apple's strategy relies on keeping this monopoly and making it as hard as possible for people to mix and match the products they buy. There's a reason it took so long for them to switch over to USB-C, years and years after everyone else did. It meant they could sell more of their own cheap chargers, another product which was never designed to last. The lawsuit about all oh, of this wow. will take years, just like any other lawsuit against a massive company with a bunch of money to throw at lawyers. But even if they do end up losing, it will only mean a fine for the government and they'll have to change a few small minor things. In the meantime, Apple will be able to keep their tricks going. It's pretty certain that they yeah. will have made far more money than they'll have to pay out. It only makes it worse that Apple's customer support has gotten so bad. Apple of used to actually care about well. their customer service. If you bought Apple, you could take your tech into any app. Parfüümi oli tehnoloogiaga Lenori parfüümiteraapia. Toob sulle intensiivse lõhna. This devil an idiot. Yeah. Bro, why I keep getting this Apple gambling? store and have it diagnosed and repaired, usually for free. Today, though, it's a different story. Now it's become yet another way for them to squeeze even more money out of you. As with all of their customer service, it's a mixed bag. There's plenty of times people have met someone who's willing to go the extra mile and help solve their issue. Then there's the horror stories of delays, fears, and eventually having to give up on ever getting your problem solved. All you need to do to see this is visit Apple's Trustpilot page, where their 1.7 out of 5 rating speaks for itself. Other large tech companies have similar abysmal ratings, but you'd expect Apple to be at least a little bit better rather than worse. Apple has made it clear that their focus is now on replacement rather than repair. It's much better for them if you just buy a new iPhone rather than getting your old one yeah, fixed. In 2011, the they introduced Apple Care Plus, a monthly fee which gives you a type of insurance for your Apple products. If you opt in, the most repairs insurance. are under $100, with replacements costing a little more. But if you don't have it, and you're past their insanely short one-year warranty, then the price they charge for repair can be more than just buying a newer model. And it's pretty clear why they're doing this. It all feeds yeah. back into their planned obsolescence and the need for people to stay on the two-year upgrade cycle. Of course, there are plenty of shops that will do it for far less, far more quickly, and without you ever paying a monthly fee before it even happens. But we've already gone into how Apple makes sure that people don't do that either. But Apple competitors don't do this. They might not have their own genius bars, but the repairs are far cheaper and the warranty lasts longer. And they also don't try to stop other people from repairing their products. When Steve Jobs Yo. passed away, Apple changed the core of their business strategy. They gave up on true innovation and decided to cash in on the loyalty they had built instead. Now they only focus on whales, the highest paying customers. Money to get the most out of their products, or even to unlock the basic features you paid for, you can only buy Apple. It's something that's cost thousands and thousands of dollars to do. And even if you do that, you still need to keep replacing the products every two to three years. They've made sure of that with their products' short lifespans and exorbitant repair costs, enabling them to squeeze so much more money out of their whales whilst leaving everyone else with an inferior product. And what have they done with all of this money? They've tried to secure the next big innovation, oh, but it yeah. hasn't really worked out. First, they threw billions at their own self-driving car project, but then they dropped this to completely focus on AI instead, which hasn't really shown any good results either. Either. Meanwhile, we've seen the same iPhone sold over and over again with the bare minimum of actual upgrades. The iPhone 16 is just the next version of that, and it will probably still be years before we see anything that's actually worth considering. And I want to end this by saying a big thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Remember to check them out today by using the link in the description below. Mix! Ma lõhnen halvasti. Vennas! Kasuta lihtsalt Old Spicy Pulk Teodoranti. Vennas! Kaua kesta värskus, et saaksid lenda või asju püüda. Viis ka pistit kule viis ja lõhna põrratult. Või tee seda!
AI and automation have arrived, have and they're going to transform society forever. From cashiers to CEOs, more jobs are getting replaced by the machines every day. The rise of new AI models is put on the accelerator, placing hundreds of millions of jobs at risk. But as the world becomes more robotic, yeah, more technology focused, what place will there be for humans? Just how many of us will lose our jobs? And like if I've so, who will buy anything? How yeah. will the economy even work? Well, today in this video, we're going to find out what's going to happen to humanity in the new age and how the economy is going to function in a completely different way. Now, it seems like every year there's some new thing that everyone is predicting will completely take over the future. Most of them get overhyped and they end up fizzling out, or it takes decades to see any real changes. AI and automation are different, as we'll see they're already changing society in a massive yeah. way. Wait, two weeks ago. This is just the beginning. Tons of different jobs and industries are either about to change forever or they already have. We mentioned cashiers earlier, and they're one of the jobs at the highest risk of automation. In most chain shops and supermarkets, sure will like them or dislike them if I seen them. It's already happened, yeah, and we all I, see I it really today. Should, it's very rare to, yeah, to go to any store now without any self-checkout machines. And if they don't have them, it just seems outdated. 2023 was actually a record year for these machines. Old Spice Gold Mühes Tushigel, Parfümi Qualitäti Galachen. Machines, with over 200,000 new ones added to the shops across the world. And there have been mixed feelings about them ever since they were introduced, but most people at least tolerate them. In a 2021 survey, 60% of people said they prefer them to the regular checkout. Most of the time, they're faster than other methods, more efficient, and if you're in your own head, you don't have to speak to anyone. Even if all of this is just a minor improvement over an incredibly slow system, people do prefer it, especially the corporations using them. The amount of money they save is astronomical. What used to take paying 20 people can now now be done with 20 machines and only two employees to oversee them. It doesn't matter if they lose tons of stock to theft, which is very common with the machines as they still easily pay for themselves over time. It also doesn't matter if the whole thing no, does end up being a lot more annoying for the consumer. The process hasn't been fully automated really. The machines only take some of the load, leaving the rest of it up to you. Meaning corporations make you do the I work and cut out the cost while also making a profit from it. And this small example is a glimpse into a future of automation on a much larger scale. Instead of the whole process getting automated, people's jobs will get replaced. Chloe, the new de parfum intense. Lenor esitleb, what does the makeup say about on võimalik anda välisõhu värskust linna selades. Nüüd on see palju lihtsam tänu uuendustele Lenorilt. Kasuta Lenor Freshier efekti ja saa pesu, mis on sama värske nagu õues kuivatatud. Proovi meie parimat värskust place partly by machines and partly by passing the work on to the consumers instead. It's something you see in another category of jobs that's about to disappear. Customer service. Years and years ago, if you called a company's customer service line, you would immediately be talking to another person who could understand your very specific question. But now automation right. has made it so you need to go through five different layers of machines before you're even in the queue. I don't want and that's wife. if the bot on the other it. end can even understand what you're saying. It's Check an absolute me. nightmare for everyone. And it clearly doesn't matter if the service gets better as the only thing that matters is whether it makes a profit. AI might make these problems a little bit better, but it will also replace lots of the things they still need real people for. And it's already happening. Take the Indian e-commerce company Dukan, which was worth $70 million in the last evaluation. And in 2023, their CEO took to Twitter to brag about how he'd been able to replace 90% of the customer service staff with an AI program, reducing the company's cost by 85%. That you can feel scary. the joy oozing out of his announcement that he can fire 90% of one of his departments. While other CEOs is my height is a bit better, they're still salivating at the possibilities as well. This is something which will soon happen to the entire customer service industry. Eventually, even representatives in physical stores could get I mean, get personally, by touch I do use Old Spice. De de uh, deodorant. Dori deo deodorant. That was a butcher. But it's not because of that, I swear. They do smell good.
You can still call her a wife other than girlfriend and a chatbot. It's yet another whole category of jobs that will soon just disappear under the steamroller of automation and AI. Data nah, entry jobs scary. are going the same way too. Between 2014 and 2022, the amount of people working these jobs in the US fell by over 20%, from 375,000 to 295,000. It's already a dying industry. Advances in AI will push this over the edge. The more procedural and consistent the work is, the more likely it is that a computer can do it instead. To go a bit further, administration cooked. and other office jobs are also destined to be replaced. This category encompasses millions of jobs. Lots of them could easily vanish in the next 10 years. Some will survive, of course, if you need special skills or you need to deal with lots of different problems, it's much harder to automate. But the ones lower down on the ladder will almost certainly go, which will just make it harder for young people to get an entry-level job. A lot of the time when new technology comes in, it creates more jobs than it replaces. When we started using cars instead of horses for transportation, it didn't upend the economy because there were yeah, new Yeah, honestly bro, AI is scary because there's like AI music as well. There's, I mean, there's even AI content creators too. That is scary. People to take. Parents. It was the same with the industrial revolution before that. Like but what will happen with AI? Bro. Will the same thing be the case? Well, it's a lot more complicated with AI, and it isn't a black. Old Spice Golmu has Tushigel. I keep getting targeted by Old Spice. For my though. picture. I mean, they are good. One of my though. favorite TV they shows is good. Mr. Robot, and you can probably tell from the channel. But did you see the mail service they use in the show? Well, they're actually today's video sponsor, Proton V. They know I use Old Spice, so they give me Old Spice ads. Okay, bro. They look for information secure and, and for new. Now we've seen how new generative AI models like ChatGPT <laughs> are almost slave. perfectly suited to basic coding. Give them a single prompt and they'll do hours of work within seconds. It isn't a question of the complete replacement of people. It's just that one Unistad tervematest juustest. Proovi uut molecular bond repair ei 5000 proove nutri pärliga. When he was AI. Is he? No, he's not a VTuber if he uses AI. That's AI, that's not VTuber. VTuber is literally like moving while well, something is tracking could use advanced AI moving. to do the work of five of ten people. No, he's not a VTuber. ...who are new to the field. Add it means Monday, that even yo. if AI can't do 100% of the tasks associated with the job, it raises the bar Bro, exponentially... Buy YouTube Premium? Okay, how, how much is YouTube Premium actually, though? Bro. <laughs> what about I get scammed? Nine euros per month? Well, it's not $30, but it's per month, so it's going to keep taking your money. Oh, no, bro. As to what the standard is in the industry, which can in turn replace tons of people. A lot of these jobs aren't things people should really be spending their whole lives on Argentinian anyway. Argentinian money, yeah. How can I use Argentinian money? Because nobody really wants to be a cashier or work in data entry when they're growing up. In a 50 or 100 years time, when the dust has settled, the world may actually be thankful that we've escaped from all this menial labor. But until that point, the economy is going to have to undergo some huge changes. And the main question will be, who will be buying anything if nobody's really working anymore? as we may very well be in a world where not everyone is expected or needed to even have a job, simply because oh, there just aren't enough of them to go around. So what are the various predictions for how bad the damage is really gonna be? Well, there's lots of different estimates, but even the most conservative still mean that millions of jobs will get replaced. In the short term, it isn't looking good. It's generally agreed that tens of millions of jobs will be lost over the next decade to AI. A lot more will be impacted in some way, which means that some parts of the work will get automated. Bro. Mix. Ma lõhk nagu halvasti. Venna, kasuta lihtsalt Old Spice'i pulk teadoranti. Venna, kaua kestav värskus, et saaksid lenda või asju püüda. Viis ka pistrit kuule viis ja lõhk nagu põrratult. Või tee seda! For customer service jobs, it means employees would only deal with the complicated problems that an AI can't solve. The 
like 730. Even though most predictions think it will boost the global economy by trillions of dollars. So how does this make sense? If people are actually going to be replaced, then how will the economy go up so much if no one can buy anything? Well, this is where it gets interesting. As we've seen already with automation, when the job gets easier, there's far more competition. Before GPS was widely used, being a London taxi driver was an incredibly hard job. If you wanted to do it, you needed to memorize a complete street yeah, map GPS of the city. Helps GPS and ride-sharing apps tore through this barrier, meaning anyone with a car and a phone could adequately do the job. And the yep. results were clear, London taxi drivers saw their wages fall by 10%. And it seems like AI might do this exact same thing to nearly every job there is. 60% of them in developed countries. Taxi? The parts that can be automated nah. Will be taken crazy. over, leaving either less jobs or lower wages for the people who can still cling on. The paperwork that makes up tons of the workload for people like doctors or police officers will disappear, meaning there's less work overall. Only a few industries like Old Spice Gold Parfumi Oh, there are taxes. teaching or agriculture are going to escape. It is a minute some level of automation, which again right. brings up the same massive question. How will the economy then continue to function? With so many people either out of work or struggling to make ends meet, it isn't clear how we're going to solve this. Corporations across the board have been taking record profits at yeah. the expense of almost everyone else. And so it doesn't seem realistic to imagine that they're suddenly going to share the money they'll make from the AI revolution. It's clear at this point that people are going to need to change the way they work. Physical labor mm. will still be important, but it won't be as common. Basic office work and simple cognitive tasks are going to be far less important. It's what AI does best. Meanwhile, complicated tasks, which need a lot of training or a good deal of natural ability, will be in much higher demand. We've seen from history that these kinds of shifts lead to stagnant wages. After the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century, when millions moved from agriculture to manufacturing, wages stayed at around the same level for 50 years straight. If this happens again, then the economic hardship we see today could continue for another 30 to 40 years before it corrects itself. In fact, this time it might even be worse. It's a simple truth. Parfümi oli tehnoloogia ka Lenori parfümiteraapia. Toob sulle intensiivse lõhna. Should not trust any of the good with money. How long? I don't know. Average 20 minutes? Look truth that tons Sometimes of people just aren't academically smart enough to make the transition. It's a pipe dream to imagine that we're going to train the millions of truck drivers that will lose their jobs and do yeah, something else. Minutes. The jobs they could realistically work instead are disappearing. Ish. People without college degrees that lose their jobs can't really easily retrain in another field and often fall through the cracks. In the best of cases, they go on to disability for the rest of their lives. Often they just can't cope with losing their purpose, turning to drink or drugs or simply just giving up. It's an awful tragedy that's going to be repeated over and over again if we can't Hell find a drugs. solution. And this transition will leave tons of people behind, as most of us just don't have the skills or the natural ability to work the highly complicated academic jobs that Give AI will create. The know. AI trucks will need people to oversee the operation and make sure it's all running smoothly, even directly taking control of certain trucks if necessary. But it's not something that's going to be easy for anyone to pick up without specific training. The world is just getting too complicated for most people, but this could be one area where people could still find a niche. Instead of directly working as a cashier, shop assistant now Provi always platinum kiirem imavus kuiv tunne ja see on mugavam now often oversee a group of self-checkout machines. Instead of the job getting harder, it changed that most of the work is guiding people through the process instead. As more and more of the world gets automated, we'll need tons of people to start working these jobs in other fields. Just Grandma's not going to be YouTube. magically figuring all of this out herself. No, She's honestly, gonna... I, I could take YouTube Premium. Because of uh, Gum Monkey. Need some help. Because developed economies are mostly made up of service jobs, this is going to create more jobs than you might think. It's a niche that people with more human centered skills aren't going to thrive in, and it could be a good way to transition people that aren't going to retrain as coders or complex system managers. The problem is that even if enough of these jobs get created, which seems unlikely, they often pay way less. In fact, we're going to see way less money in the hands of normal people in general. But again then, how will the economy continue to function? How can prices continue to go up and an economy start booming if nobody has any money to actually spend? We're at a crossroads right now. There's two main ways this can all play out. The first option could just be a complete disaster. Society continues on, no checks are in place, big tech AI companies get out of control, ethics departments are continually stripped and lacking government regulation.
regulation means we enter into a technocracy. Companies will pretend it's business as usual, but over time they'll cut out more and more of their employees, leaving the consequences for someone to deal with later on. If using AI makes a company 20% more productive, then they can fire 20% of their employees and maintain the same output. People yeah, won't even same. know it's AI either. They'll just get fired for quote, underperforming instead. On this path, we'll see an outcry of big changes like self-driving trucks, yeah. but the small changes that make the difference when you put them together will go unnoticed. Like you get locked into a video and then YouTube shows an ad. It fucks you up. The media will blame the same tired old issues while more people Does get pushed out of the system forward every forward. day. In this future, the profits from AI won't go it's to the people smart. who need them. Corrupt governments will be paralyzed by lobbyists, making sure the corporations are keeping their profits it's in check. It. Meanwhile, they'll go yeah, bankrupt trying that. to deal with millions of newly unemployed people. Without those jobs, people simply won't have enough money to keep the economy going. Crime will skyrocket as people go into desperation. Taxes will barely be paid, police officers stripped away from the streets, and anarchy and lawlessness takes over society. The relative value of human labor plummets, meaning almost everybody shut out of the economy without anything to keep themselves afloat, apart from stealing from one another, fending for themselves, and selling whatever they can to survive, which is an absolute recipe for chaos. People won't have anything to gain, so they won't have anything to lose. They'll vote for who Whoever says they'll make things better, the people offering the simplest solutions. It means a rise in extremism that will lead to unrest and eventually revolutions and even dictatorship and fascism. Campbell, or if it swings no. the other way around, communism. Now it might seem like that's far away, but all it takes is enough hungry <laughs> people to true. upend the entire system. Suddenly the reality, the social norms you that we live in today, in just won't be able to exist. Key governed services like policing, ambulances, law and order will just be abstract concepts that have no relevancy. And eventually the economic scales will tip back the other way just like they always have. But it would take decades and it's impossible to say how many casualties there will be along the way. And of course, none of this is set in stone. There is an alternative to this global tragedy, but it's all gonna hinge on what happens to the money and the value that AI is going to create. If it gets to the people who need it, it will soften the blow significantly. There aren't any easy solutions, but there's a few things that could really help it. take the edge of this crisis. One solution so. that's been discussed, although not nearly enough, could be universal basic income, otherwise known as UBI. Using the profits from AI and incredibly well-maintained automated systems, which are projected to make trillions in profits, developed governments could simply give their citizens enough money to never have to worry about working, but also keep society in check yeah, and taxes be paid. Thinking. However, it's not just as simple as this. Yeah, the I loss of meaning in people's happen. lives is they have no passion, no actual work to do, no career. People are corrupt. Rear, no destiny. Will make people feel apathetic and just lazy. An essential part of being a human is working towards something which can't just be replaced by a monthly check handed out by the government. It'd be more like a band-aid than an actual cure, but it would at least make sure that people don't go hungry and AI wouldn't completely destroy their lives. Now, let me see the uh, YouTube premium uh, free trial. Do I have to put my credit card information? If so, then uh, I don't know about that. Oh yeah, you need oh ye, oh yeah oh yeah okay yeah you need my uh, credit card information yeah Gigi I I'm I'm about to do all that I would definitely do it and we get this great. Reach out. Daily literal listening to FNAF song. Skibbity toilet. What? You listen to FNAF songs? Yeah, that's cringe. Most of them are banger. Alright, bro. Save me this of FNAF fan boy. Fan boy. Yeah, you're, you're too obsessed with FNAF, bro. Way too obsessed.
hyvasti, te ismeline mina. Äh? Aeg lõhnata, nagu mees. Old Spice. Kaua püsiv, julge, parfüümi kvaliteet. Yeah, like Meile meeldib lõhnata, nagu te ismelised. See sobib meile. Enam mitte. Sorry for ads. Lõhnamiseni, te ismeline mina. Hinga sisse Lenori parfüümiteraapia intensiivset lõhna. Kolm korda kaua kestvam Bro, värskus. If there's one thing worse than preachy worked, man. egotistical celebrities, it's preachy egotistical journalists. As the mainstream media continues to lose its grip on power with the rise of independent media nice. online, journalists are doing everything they can to bring down silence and cancel anyone who doesn't agree with their crumbling status quo. Most of the time, people, especially celebrities, cower to them, afraid of saying the wrong thing or being manipulated into acting a certain way to keep up good PR. But sometimes, mm. in rare instances, people will call these journalists out to their face. And as you'll see in this video, it's just incredible. Humiliation, uh, ritual, whatever the fuck. At YouTube for trying to be hard to remove it. Yeah. Like, bro, let, be let us live, to man. Watch. Like when Channel 4, one of the most vicious mainstream media platforms, tried to take down Quentin down. Tarantino, but it didn't take long for things to completely backfire on them. Guru Mati tries to corner and bait Tarantino with his questions his about slavery Gould? and controversy, trying to make a basic interview a about name. a movie become a political talking point. These but the producer days, yeah. has an intelligent answer for everything he can throw at him. Clearly proud of the film he's produced and the conversations it sparked amongst those who've watched it. He doesn't have time for all the political pandering that is expected of Hollywood elites. Why did you want to make a movie with slavery as a theme? Did that just come with making a Western in that period? God, it's, I've always wanted to explore slavery in, in a film before. Um, but I think actually my real reason to, uh, yeah, I mean, I did, I've always wanted to explore slavery, but I guess the reason that, I, that actually made me put pen to paper was to give black American males a Western hero, give them a cool folkloric hero that could actually be empowering and actually pay back blood what? for blood. But you, you must care very deeply that this doesn't become the you know, a film that stands that? out from the rest of your body of work as one that is, you know, trashed by more people or anything. It's like not that, trashed you know? by more people. Yeah, you know, that what you're what you're saying is not correct. It's no, not no, trashed I, by more people. Yeah. I'm not saying it is. I'm saying that are, are you concerned? I mean, no, no, I suppose... no, no, no. I'm not talking about the movie right now. You're talking about you know. I'm talking about there is actually a dialogue going on about slavery right now that has not been happening at all. It's a subject people are afraid to talk about. And now because of this movie, <sighs> people aren't afraid to talk about it. People are talking about it. Seeing that he's not getting. 32 lean, y'all are broke. Uh, I'm rich on here. All this lean from ga Gamba, all shit.com, the best gambling site on planet Earth. Uh, Seeing a reaction from Tarantino, Guru Murti then decides to focus on the film's violence. While Tarantino looks like he's getting progressively more put off by the interviewer, he does answer his questions up until Guru Murti asks if there's a link between movie violence and real violence. Almost Maybe that fixes my YouTube situation. So the way back machine, that works? web.archive.org Yeah, way back machine. Wait, no, that wouldn't work. That literally would not work. This is one month ago. Okay, he would not be IP grab. That is not an IP grabber. I don't think Sabin would even do that to me. He's trying to make Tarantino. Because if I go way back, machine, this is only one month ago. I have, I have to go way, way back to work. Yeah, he seemed nah. like a bad guy for just having ridiculous violence in his movies, like as if this video. is affecting the real world at all. But why are you so sure that there's no link between enjoying movie violence and enjoying real violence? I don't. I. Well, I'm going to tell you why I'm so sure. Don't not ask me a question like that. I'm not going to. I'm not biting. I refuse your question. Why? Because I refuse your question. 
I did it to y'all and to your friends. What? You know where's my IP? What you mean, bruh? Doesn't videos work that we post it later than way back machine? I mean, if I go like five months back, this wouldn't work. Because five months ago, this wouldn't be posted. You got six IPs? Uh oh. I'm not your slave and you're not my master. You I can't make me dance to your tune. I, I I'm, not, ever, I'm not a monkey. I'm I can't not, make you answer anything. I'm just I'm will, asking and, you interesting and, questions. And, and Wait, I, it will appear? Really? Okay, I'll try. Enter a URL. Your IP. You just gave your IP away. Hey, Raj, welcome back. The link you at? Okay, I did not ask for IP grabber. What? The best porn videos ever 2025? Premium only. <laughs> what the fuck is that? No. Alright, so if we go to. Alright, so 2023. Yeah, I, I can't go. Yeah, literally. Because it's one month ago, so I can go to here. So it doesn't work. And I'm saying, and I'm saying I refuse. Okay. Deciding. <laughs> He's had enough of the reporter's way the of conducting. The monster acting like mods, aka gays. In this interview, I'm recognizing that he's trying to get a rise out of him. What's Taran wrong with gay people? Tina refuses the question. Oh, when Guru Murti tries to keep at it, the producer explains that the interview is being conducted to sell his movie and nothing else. Uh, yeah, it's interesting that you have a different view, and I'm just trying to explore that. Yeah, and I don't want to. Because well, I mean, I'm here to sell my movie. This is a commercial for the movie. Make no mistake. Well, you and I, yeah, yeah. This so is, you don't want to talk about anything serious. Yeah, I don't want to talk about what you want to talk about. I don't want to talk about the implications of violence. Guru Marty tries to undermine him by constantly commenting that he doesn't want to talk about anything Tobias serious, gaming. completely ignoring the fact that Tarantino had been more than happy to discuss the conversations about slavery his movie had sparked a few minutes later. All of this just to force him, Channel 4, one of care. the major news networks in England's political bias and messaging. While promoting a movie is necessary, talking to someone who seems more interested in creating a spectacle, politically virtue signaling, and victim blaming more than nah, the actual like movie you're trying videos. to promote seems incredibly unpleasant. And sadly, this has just become all far too common, which is unfortunately what would happen to Matthew McConaughey. Celebrities and mainstream figures are constantly having their privacy exploited by some of the worst people yeah. imaginable, and it's made even worse by the media. But it's not just celebrities who are having their privacy exploited, it's happening to all of us. Which is why I want to tell you about our video sponsor, Aura. You see, data brokers sell your information to anyone no, you interested. didn't. Scammers, spammers, you name it. Your full name, email, home address, health records, and even details. Link in the description to start your two-week free trial today. 
Matthew McConaughey is well loved for his charm what? and acting abilities. And as the years have worn on, Matthew's turned his focus from film, instead choosing to spend more of his time with his children while occasionally dipping his toes into the political sphere. Going on Joe Rogan's podcast, talking about his Christian faith, and seeming to be a fairly well balanced guy compared to everyone else from Hollywood. But unfortunately, even after all of his successes in escaping the Hollywood industry, he's still been unable to escape rude interviewers. Like when he was promoting his children's book Just Because in 2023 on the show The View. Now, the talk show in recent years has become very controversial due to the result of clashing annoying personalities and an inability of them to listen to differing opinions. So when it was announced that Matthew would appear on the show, people were curious about how things would play out, and it was so much worse than anyone could imagine. You see, Matthew in the ideal world would be the perfect guest. He laughs with hosts, is charming right. on camera, and is happy to let the interview go where it pleases. This way. <laughs> such as when one of the hosts puts her foot on the table for McConaughey to massage, and he plays into the bit with practice D's. Hey, you know where I got this from? This is my dad's trip. <laughs> but most remarkably though, is that he somehow manages to be patient and ignores all the attempts at provocation that the host throws at him. Early in the interview, she makes a snide remark about Novak Djokovic being an anti-vaxxer, in reference to the fact that he refused to get a COVID vaccine. Rather than Based. entertain the comment, Matthew challenged her with a very simple, he's an anti-vaxxer. I'm an anti-vaxxer. So, yeah. <laughs> no. Way to bring it you, down. But you were kidding. It's a very quick moment, but the smile on his face very quickly drops when he realizes who he's speaking to. So the rest of the view hosts quickly move the conversation back to the topic at hand, and the moment is dropped as McConaughey's smile returns to his face. But unfortunately, this was only the start, as things would take a turn for the worse when politics came up once again. Now, there's no denying that McConaughey is passionate about the things he cares about. He's a born and bred Texan is evident not only You're in his films, which he puts his all into, but also in his day-to-day -day life, especially when it comes to topics like freedom, but also more disturbing things like shootings. Now, Texas is well known for having many school shootings, and this led him to start calling for better gun responsibility. And messages about a mass shooting in the town I was born in began flood my inbox. In a bit of shock, I drove home, I hugged my children a bit tighter and longer than the night before. And then the reality of what had happened that day in the town I was born in set in. People across the state were so moved by how much he cared that some even felt that he should try running for office himself. Sonny Hostin was discussing this very thing with him, asking mm. about the possibility in politics, when suddenly the other host interrupted, wanting to know if McConaughey thought he'd ever be elected in Texas despite his anti-gun stance. Oh. Her attempt to box Matthew Wynn and play off his political stance as a them v us situation wasn't something he would entertain. He looked like he'd had enough. He didn't want to virtue signal and be preachy, like is expected of many of those in Hollywood. Instead, he just looked like he'd had enough. To give you a direct statement right there is yeah. playing a game that I'm not interested in playing. Okay, to don't, give you don't a direct do it. statement don't right there. All he wants to do was promote his stuff, but now he was in a really annoying situation. But he recognized all of this as bait and didn't let it affect his calm demeanor. He calmly but sternly informs the host that he won't play her political games and refuses. He's asking, can you get drafted, basically? Uses to answer her question. She then holds up her hand in mock surrender at his reaction, and Whoopi Goldberg tries to move the exchange as quickly as possible, distracting the audience with the fact that they would all be getting a copy of McConaughey's book and that the view had a surprise waiting for the actor. But it's pretty satisfying to watch the host squirm after being challenged and called out for her backhandedness in the most polite ways possible. Having all this political virtue signaling shoved down our throats, it's nice to see it be dismantled calmly. And while the co-host did try to do some damage control in the second segment of their interview, it was far too late. But the best part of all is that Matthew I'm never lucky. gets visibly angry. You gave our very own Joy Behar a foot massage. A highlight, a highlight <laughs> in my a, life. We have a clip. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And the only time he raises his voice is when he gets excited. It's a far cry from someone like Joe Rogan, who has a very Yo, explosive Joe method Rogan. of confronting people, but is equally entertaining to watch. Now, Rogan is always on the other side of the couch, interviewing big name celebrities, professionals, and interesting personalities. As a result, he often shuts down his fair share of rude people. But it was during the pandemic, when so CNN and was. the mainstream media would do everything they could to destroy Joe Rogan and cancel him for good, all because of his views on the coronavirus. I'm CNN in particular would go directly up. Pretty convenient, because I have 21 in my uh, username. After Joe Rogan's throat. Money off of it. Disinformation, I should say. Joe Rogan has been at the center of controversy for comments that he's made about the pandemic and vaccines. Calling him yeah. a crazy man, someone not to be taken seriously, and someone who should have his entire show cancelled. So when <laughs> okay. people saw that. You're not 82. You're not 82.
maybe half of that. CNN's chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, would appear on the podcast. Everybody knew sparks were going to fly, especially after CNN's wild claims that Rogan hey, used horse debomber as a cure for COVID. But instead, we got a civil discussion between two men who cared about an issue affecting many people. But it was a very satisfying watch for many to see Joe Rogan completely Stupid dismantle monkey. CNN once and for all. It all began with a discussion about coronavirus <laughs> and Joe lie. Rogan's controversial takes on it. And while they obviously differed on opinions and Rogan's refusal <laughs> to get the vaccine, however, things would take a turn when Rogan brought up the Guardian's report on a study that suggested that healthy boys were more likely to be diagnosed with myocarditis, a disease that causes one's heart to inflame, after taking a certain medicine, more than they were Oof. to be hospitalized from COVID itself. So Gupta started to stumble over his words and argued that he didn't know if the boys needed to be hospitalized. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that they ended up needing to be hospitalized, though. But Rogan quickly pointed out that he was contradicting the information directly in front of him. But it says it right there. 86% uh, of the boys affected what? by vaccine-related myocarditis required some hospital care. Yeah. Rogan then used the article to go into his belief uh, that even uh, if you get vaccinated, you can still spread the disease and get infected. That you can spread it when you're vaccinated. Sure. In fact, this most recent outbreak that we had at the comedy store was spread by a vaccinated person. The doctor focused more How do you skip the age of 11? on the get infected Bro, part what? of the statement and continued to argue that vaccinated people are far less likely to get infected. According to some, this, this new data that's Oh, it's a bug because you are closer than us to mark coming out eight times <laughs> less scared. likely to get infected if you have been back while the back and forth is interesting rogan didn't take long to get to what many of his listeners were really curious to hear about the confrontation over cnn's wild <laughs> claims rogan has never been Bro, afraid to ask his guests questions that may make them feel Yo, uncomfortable right and the now. same is clearly true for dr sanjay gupta the comedian asks him point blank how he feels about the network he works for, lying about the medication Rogan's doctor had prescribed to him. I'm missing, I'm missing. Do you think I that that's a problem, that your news network was not lies? Gupta then suddenly looks nervous throughout the entire segment Me? and tries to move past the issue without really addressing it. Still, Rogan brings him back, demanding to know his thoughts. Can I just come back to the one I want to talk about? I, two, no, no, two, no, no, two no, things no. on you the have ledger. To, you have, before we get to that, does it bother you that the news network right. you work for out and out lied, just well, outright lied. The doctor doesn't have a good explanation for what happened and simply repeats that the network shouldn't have said that. They, they, they shouldn't have said that. Why did they do that? I don't know. He even tries to defend CNN despite how bad it made Rogan look, not just through the report, but their version of his video announcing he had COVID, which the podcast host revealed has a yellow filter on to try and make him look worse. Turns out I got COVID. Look, they put a so yellow filter on me too. So we immediately threw the kitchen sink at it. All <laughs> they kinds did. of meds, monoclonal antibodies. You see those antibodies, original video uh, versus that? I look like shit there. Z Do you know that? I think you look good. Pause. Uh, Pause. Uh, it's enough. Prednisone. I don't That's think. That's enough, Jimmy. I don't but, think Aaron had glee. Gupta then tries to argue that they can have a nuanced discussion Bro. about CNN's lying a few more times during the interview. See, here's the thing. It, it, can we? You can have nuanced discussions about this. <laughs> Pointing out that the FDA has been spreading false information about Rogan's apparent horse dewormer, but the comedian wasn't having any of it. All Gupta could really say about the incident after it was that it really shouldn't have happened. And while a few of Rogan's podcast episodes have led to some harsh exchanges, people can never say he doesn't respect his interviewee's time. The same can't be said for the journalist Ricky Gervais had to deal with showing up is the minimum requirement for an interview. One reporter who was supposed to interview him didn't even bother to show up. Or rather, she forgot they were supposed to have their interview. During a Facebook how Live, Gervais talked about how he hadn't had to promote his shows in years because of his fans on various social media platforms. I, I actually haven't done like a press interview for years because of you guys on Twitter and Facebook and everything. The discussion seemed to trigger a memory as he began to tell his audience about one of his last experiences with an interviewer that didn't go well. Um, it was for a posh paper as well, one of the Sundays, posh UK paper. I thought, you know, that'd be, they could be a bit, you know, snidey, but they're fair. And would hold their journalist to a certain level of integrity. It'd be a good change of pace and a way to promote his most recent project at the time. On the day of the interview, Gervais then headed into his office, ready to see what the paper had in store for him. Just for him to discover that only his PR person and the photographer from the newspaper had arrived. And we were waiting. As you know, I hate lateness. So eventually, my PR person called the journalist and she went, oh no, I thought it was tomorrow. At first she asks if they can reschedule for the next day, hoping to meet Gervais in person. But the comedian obviously has a very busy schedule and says they'll have to do the interview over the phone. And so he said, look, we've got to do a phone. We'll have to do it on the phone now. She went, well, I can't do it now. Oh God, 
Um, I'll call you later. Chavez even offered to extend the interview as they weren't meeting face to face, and he didn't have to rush off anywhere. While the comedian probably wasn't too pleased with the way things had gone, we can assume that his willingness to lengthen the interview meant it was at least pleasant. However, an unfortunate surprise was awaiting him. In an attempt to either hide the fact that she messed up the day from her boss, or to do a more psychological piece on the comedian, the journalist <laughs> pretended grandma. like she met him at his office and described Gervais as a combative person who didn't look like he wanted to do the interview. The interview comes out in the paper. It starts off, I went to Ricky's office. He leaned back in his chair. She presented she was there. His body language said he did not want to do this. He was combative. What? What? Not only did she criticise the office and lie about being in the room with Gervais, but she also ended her piece by claiming that Gervais had enjoyed her interview so much that he insisted to make it longer. He liked my interview so much he insisted we did longer. It's a phenomenal idea to insult someone who could expose the truth and possibly ruin your career with just one tweet, but she didn't seem to think that far. Fortunately for the journalist, Gervais never says her name mind? or the name of the paper she works for. No. But unfortunately for those who want to do an interview with Gervais in the future, he never plans on doing another much. chat show or press interview again. And who can blame him? While failing to show up for an interview and then lying about it is incredibly rude, nothing tops disaster interviews quite like the one Robert Downey Jr. had to endure while promoting Age of Ultron. The iconic actor quickly became one of the most well-loved members of Hollywood thanks to his undeniable charisma and unabashed willingness to be himself. Love you, Iron Man and made people smile while doing so. He also seems to have avoided all the cringe political stuff that most people in Hollywood join in on. He's just an actor, and he knows it. But at the same time, everyone also knows that he does have a checkered past. Downey's never been one to shy away from it, often joking with interviewers and praising those who helped him escape. What is the root of an addiction that's so powerful like that, that, that people are willing really to walk right to the edge of hell and look in? Uh, remember when you were talking about sex earlier? Yeah. <laughs> kind of feels good yeah what? well imagine if sex turned really ugly and you couldn't stop but every time you know that kind of thing does sex turn really ugly after a point <laughs> how's it going still anyone who's seen him talk You're about his past knows it's long behind him and he just wants to move on with his life and perform as an actor nothing else <laughs> however once how again krishnan gurumati wasn't how do you get 17 harder to 14. not mystic is true to let his past go. Near the end of a basic interview, where Robert Downey was promoting Age of Ultron, Guru Murthy decides to turn the interview away from the movie and towards Downey himself and his personality, who politely reminds what? him that everyone will have the same amount of time to <laughs> No, that's... Him. After trying and failing to guess quite... Raj, that's a crazy comment. ...out a few times, Guru Murthy finally manages to bring up Downey's past and asks him if he thinks he's free of his drug habits. Downey doesn't look pleased with the line of questioning. It's just completely off topic and unnecessary, but he still remains Wait. calm and reminds the Channel 4 news reporter that he's here to promote a movie. Robert Downey Jr. practically jumps out of his chair when his agent says that they're done. That's he the does take guy. a moment to smile and say bye before he leaves, leaving Guru Murthy stuttering in his chair. Sorry, I, I really hey, welcome don't, back. I, I, what are we doing? Uh, uh, well, I'm just asking questions, that's all. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye. Wait, why'd you tell me for 10 seconds? Hey, it's just getting a little dinosaur in your... No, no, look, I don't want to do that. <laughs> The interview immediately went viral and was a perfect example of what not to do as a journalist. And as it racked up over 10 million views, those who watched it developed a lot more respect for Downey and remarked they wouldn't have stayed nearly as long. Guru Murthy didn't do any favors for himself after the interview when he appeared on Unfiltered with James O'Brien. Rather than accept responsibility for his poor questioning, he tried to paint Robert Downey Jr. in a bad light, something many viewers really didn't appreciate in the slightest, as you can see with the dislike counts. But sadly, as this kind of interviewing causes so much out outraging clicks in emboldened journalists to continually push the boundaries of decency, which is why in their last ditch effort to gain relevancy, they won't stop anytime soon. And it doesn't even matter who you are anymore. This is especially true for someone like Cara Delvine, who was just trying to promote Paper Towns and was then subject to ridicule cool. from her interviewers. Things were rocky the moment the interview with Good Day Sacramento started when the host introduced her as Clara rather than Cara, and it just got worse from there. While Cara conducted herself professionally, the same can't be said of the hosts. After being asked a question with an obvious answer, Cara responded with some good humoured sarcasm before giving her actual answer. 
something the host didn't seem to appreciate. Looks As the interview progressed, Kara would continue to respond with dry sarcasm, especially to some of the more awkward questions, and appeared more passionate about the film that she was producing. Uh, no, I never read the book or the script, actually. I kind of winged it. Yeah. Uh, no, of course, <laughs> I love the book. Nice I think dry. the book's amazing. However, the host didn't seem to think she was giving her all. One of them asked her if she was exhausted, because she didn't seem as excited as she should be. I saw you in London talking a couple weeks ago on TV, and you seemed a lot more excited about it than you do right right now. Are you just exhausted? And another commented that she seemed irritated. You seem, you do seem a bit, <laughs> a bit irritated. Perhaps it's just us. Kara looked shocked by the summation of her, assuring them that she was plenty excited to talk about the movie and was by no means irritated. But the host didn't seem to care about this and brushed her off with a comment about her taking a nap or grabbing a Red Bull. What? We'll let you what license? Go then, how about that? Right. Why don't you go take a little nap, maybe get a Red Bull. How about that? <laughs> it's a really odd interaction all around, and the host's opinion of Kara don't improve when she drops off the call. Whether or not it was intentional, I'm not sure, but honestly, who can blame her? With the interviewers remarking again that she'd been in the mood, when all she seemed... That's no... What? Drive what? Cara, that's Cap. Seemed to have done was answer the questions. After the interview, Cara then proved her professionalism further by simply remarking that some people just didn't understand that's her Cap. sense of humor and commenting Maybe that she I'm doesn't okay. appreciate people insinuating that she doesn't work hard. The now, fuck? of course, no artist would appreciate being told they don't work hard, much less having their art insulted relentlessly for no How? reason. Something Clive Anderson didn't seem to understand about the Bee Gees. You You're too young to have a driving license. No fight. The car's having a brain. Uh, I guess. You gotta be like 18 to drive a car. The fuck? You see, one of the first examples of journalists going way too far to get views by berating a celebrity was all the way back in 1997. In 1997, the Bee Gees appeared on Clive Anderson's chat show All Talk. While the interview Stop started the well, with the brothers laughing along with Anderson, things started to go quickly down. I mean, you're 18, Spam. But okay. Oh, you've been where you were 17. Huh. I mean, you can't, but wouldn't there be some distra uh, some limits? Yeah. I think there are some limits if you're driving younger than 18. Hill, towards a well-loved and highly successful group of musicians. Things start there's no way, like, there's no extra limits. Started to take quite a bit of a sour turn after Anderson called the brothers hit writers with one letter shy. They laugh at the joke good-heartedly, but Barry Gibbs' laughter does feel a bit forced, almost like he's trying to maintain his professionalism. Maurice Gibbs seems to be the only one enjoying the Huh. Weird. Estonia, you have a limit. If you're under 18, then get a license. Interesting. Oh well. Hey, Luca! It's, it's going uh, normal as always. How about you? the interview, mostly Hopefully because better. he's playing up his friendliness. As the interview continued and Anderson dominated the conversation, Barry seemed to get more and more irritated with him. His smile slowly dropped from his face, and his good humor and laughter turned into short, clipped answers. Their interviewer didn't even seem to realize how their attitude had changed until it was far too late. Everything I came to a head minutes. when Barry brought up Don't Forget to Remember, an old song of his that Anderson claimed to have forgotten. I, don't, I can't even remember well, we why. One at the same time called Don't Forget to Remember, which was in yeah. the you're not 23, bro. I forgot that one. But okay. yeah, <laughs> uh, Thoroughly put off, the oldest of the Gibb brothers decides enough is enough. And after sarcastic- Not really? Come on, Luca. It's gotta be something better. Basically remarking to Anderson that they're, quote, getting on like a storm, he finishes with, I might just leave. Yeah. The video is eight more minutes, so eight yeah, more of, minutes. Of course, We're getting yeah. on like a storm, aren't we, Tom? Yeah. The young one. <laughs> In fact, I might just leave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've never had anyone walk out before, but uh, well, uh, we are. Uh, I'm guessing three years ago. So, pal. <laughs> so Good anyway, night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> maybe two, three, two. Setup. Uh, Nineteen, maybe.
Anderson then seems to think the two brothers are doing a bit at first, remarking that he's never had anyone walk out before and laughing as they leave. However, reality yeah, quickly me. sets in, and the smile drops as he realizes they're not actually coming back. Well, you can stay in uh, just. Well, I'd love to, but I don't do impressions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get this off. Well, I'll get it off next door. I'll see you later, guys. Okay. Leaves Anderson alone and astounded as he tries to process the abrupt ending of the show. It's a great Damn. end to the disaster of the interview and a testament to his <laughs> life how strong the Brothers Bond was. Years later, the brothers mentioned they were quite From disappointed me, with how things turned me, out. Brother. They felt it was less of an interview and more just a barrage of insults. They had all been fans of Clive Anderson before the show, so it was pretty disappointing for them. And considering this was a very early interview, it marked a change in the media and journalism. And Funny enough, I have a driving exam in the next month, so if any anything goes well, I should get my license in the next month. Following years, as we can see with the next person on our list. Unfortunately, there's no shortage of horrible reporters. Matt Damon encountered his own in 2011 when he intended the Save Our Schools march in Washington, D.C. Given that Damon's mother is a teacher, it makes sense that he'd feel so strongly about the cause. So when reporters from the media outlets Reason TV suggested that teachers didn't lack job security and therefore didn't work hard, unlike actors who have to do well and work hard to get their next job, Damon was having none of this. In acting, you, there, is, there isn't job security, right? There's an incentive to work hard and be a better actor because you want to have a job. So why isn't it like that for teachers? You, so think, you think job insecurity is what makes me work hard? Well, you have an incentive to work harder, but if there's I, job I security... Actor, it's not an incentive. That's the thing. <laughs> so you take this MBA-style thinking, right? It's the problem with ed policy right now. There's this intrinsically paternalistic view of problems that are much more complex than that. It's like saying a teacher is going to get lazy when they have tenure. Even though it seems like almost every celebrity wants to virtue signal about how they're so connected with the average person, it seemed like Matt Damon truly felt like this and wasn't trying to show off his support for teachers, as he was having none of it. He reminded the reporter of the less than ideal salary teachers were paid and their ridiculously long hours and terrible treatment by the government. A teacher wants to teach. I mean, why else would you take a shitty salary and really long hours and, and, and do- <laughs> Children age 21. <laughs> you don't do that job. Oh, you're making me cry. Unless you really love to do it. When the reporter's cameraman tried to chip in with a stat about how 10% of teachers are bad, something that just seems randomly plucked out of nowhere, Damon shut him down immediately, refusing to let him talk down on his mother's profession. 10% are bad though? 10% of teachers are bad. Where'd you get that number? I don't know. 10% of people in any profession maybe should think of something else. Well, okay, but I mean, maybe you're a shitty cameraman. I don't know. Many people feel that teaching was, and still is, a highly unappreciated profession. True. So it was incredible you to see to a major celebrity so adding his voice to the problem in a non preachy cringe way and actually addressing these reporters properly. But something else that was equally as impressive was watching Dakota Johnson handle Ellen DeGeneres all the way back in 2019. The internet fell in love with Johnson's awkward yet witty sense of humor and long gone tooth gap at the moment she first appeared on screen. And she's been winning people's hearts ever since. So when she appeared on The Ellen Show in 2019 to promote the peanut butter true. falcon, people were excited. What they didn't know was that the interview would start to open their eyes to the reality of who Ellen DeGeneres really was. And exposure is one of the biggest bullies in media. Ellen has a history of humiliation to oh, humanize yeah. celebrities, though it can often be more dehumanizing than anything else. This is especially true for celebrities like like Taylor Swift, whom Ellen badges for details about her love life whenever she appears on the show, and constantly tries to insinuate that she is in a relationship yeah, with celebrity annoying. Swift considers her friends. So happy to Four see you. Minutes, Every time you're minutes. here, you make me very happy. You were here with your boyfriend, Zac Efron, last time. How's he doing? Hi, weird flex. We actually never dated. Yes, he did. So when you... <laughs> no matter how uncomfortable the singer may look. Fortunately, Johnson, who has been on the show a couple of times, was used to Ellen's bullying tactics and ready for Ellen's attempt to embarrass her in front of her no, entire I didn't audience. Know. Ellen doesn't Thanks, even so hesitate, did. starting the interview by congratulating Johnson on turning 30 before immediately demanding why she hasn't been invited. It's good to I see you. Did. Happy belated birthday. When was your birthday? It was October 4th. October 4th. You turned 30. I did. And um, how was the party? I wasn't invited. The actress was quick to tell Ellen that she was lying. Johnson explained that after how hard of a time Ellen had given her when she wasn't invited to her party before, despite the fact that the actress doesn't even know if Ellen liked her or not, she made sure to invite her this time. Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. Last year, yeah, no, last I time I was on the show, last year, 
He gave me a bunch of shit about not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. Well, who doesn't want to be invited to a party? Well, I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> when Ellen tried to deny receiving an like invitation, party. possibly because it made her look bad, Johnson told her to ask everyone referring to her crew. But I did invite you and you didn't come, so. This time you invited me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. How do you know? I don't think so. Ask everybody. When Ellen's producer informed her that she had received an invite but hadn't gone because she was out of town, no, Ellen suddenly that. remembered the invite and thanked Thanks, Johnson. Raj. Ask Jonathan, your producer. Who okay. said you were? I yeah, was invited? Prepared. Why didn't I go? Oh yeah, I had that thing. Um. <laughs> While it's satisfying to watch Ellen squirm as much as her guests do when she places them in uncomfortable situations, the whole ordeal is made even better when Johnson reveals that somebody else, and not Ellen, is her favorite comedian. Um, and then, the, but Tig Notaro performed <laughs> okay. at a party? She is my favorite comedian. Yeah. Other than you. <laughs> It's fun to watch one of the most hated people in media get put in their place, especially when they try to claim a connection with a successful celebrity, almost pushing their way I into other people's like, lives well, to use their democracy. energy and success to make them look better. But nothing quite beats Michael B. Jordan's Last infamous one, interview. While on the red carpet for Creed 3, Jordan encounters a radio host who revealed bro, that she went to the bitching. same high school as him and was one of the students who teased him for his aspirations We've and the fact that he shared time. a name with the basketball star. Come on Hustle Show, we got Michael B. Jordan, the director, and the star of Creed 3. And you know, Brother. we know each other. We go way back all the way to Chad Science and Newark. And when the two reunited on the carpet, the radio host reminded the actor of their history. But Mike was quick to comment on how he was called, quote, the corny kid by the radio host herself. Okay. Nah, yo, Wiley. <laughs> nah. Now she tries to defend herself, claiming he was misquoting her. But still, Jordan assures her that he heard what the she world said. Is not gonna I end, did bro. not say that. Misquoted for sure. No, so you did not hear me say that. I said we Two, used to minutes. make fun of the name. Smiling throughout the exchange, remembering that she was one of his childhood buddies all those years ago. While he comes across as playful, <laughs> there's good reason to suspect he takes some satisfaction in watching one of his former buddies scramble, trying to get an interview from him while he embarrasses her in front of everyone and exposes her well, as the boy she was. Well, by no means, we don't want to glorify celebrity worship culture in this video, <laughs> but sometimes when you see patronizing, virtue signaling journalists finally getting humbled by the people they're supposed to be reporting on, you can't help but respect the celebrity in question. But unfortunately, with the crumbling of the mainstream media, they will hold on to all of the power they can. Right. And if that means trying to bring down any person who doesn't fit into their narrative, these sorts of interviews will only become far too common. There you go. It ended. Two minutes, bro. Who gives a shit? Brother, two minutes here and there. It ain't that deep, bro. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. I'm that fellow, though. All right. Um. Murder. Rolls. Uh. Joke. Or should we do Tico? We didn't do D Tico uh, yesterday. Because the time was very late. Voting time. Alright, GG. My IP got leaked. He was gay as spam right now. Alright, brother. <laughs> oh, if I skip, I have to kiss. Alright, All right, murder it is. It ain't yours, bro. There you go. Shut the fuck up. Bucks tennis. <laughs> fuck do you force someone to kiss I don't know apparently he will and I'm a heart just a sweetheart that I am 
my bad values zaddy what hey johnny how you doing bro we got spam saving mystic raj anyone else joining Luca probably doesn't want to join. What about you, Johnny? Or where is Monkey? True. That is a good question. Alright. Fuck is Johnny? He's kind of new. Welcome to a tutorial light getaway at the Trivia Murder Party. First question. A lot of people. What is the dominant search engine in Russia? Uh. Use your device to answer the question. Yeah, I was about to say, there's no way it's Google. I'm a guess. Time's almost stop. No, there's no way. And the correct answer is... Baidu? You got the question I was right. thinking of Yandex. I was thinking of Yandex. The rest of you, Shit come ass. with me. Welcome to room 101. It's non-smoking. W room. Let's Yandex. play a dice game. Okay, bro. We start by Use handing Yandex out extra dice. You moron! Go ahead. Gamble. Give your die to someone to make life harder for them. Oh, you didn't pick me. That's Roll interesting. Up. The player with the highest total dies. Oh, I'm safe. Good luck, Johnny. Wow. What can I say? Dice just roll like that. Save him down. Unlucky, bro. Hey, look. I made the elevator a scoreboard moment. Pretty cool, huh? Let's keep moving. About how long is the Panama Canal? Ooh. Why do I feel like it's this? Who picked this? <laughs> Everyone is wrong. Follow me. It is kind of sus. Well, that's all America. Welcome I guess. back to the killing room. <laughs> ah, the lost uh, art of letter writing. Oh, I'm cooked. I'm literally at worst at I'm this. I'm going to dictate a message to you. Write down as Fuck much of you, what I say Saban. as you can. The player who writes the fewest of my words will die. Get your typing fingers ready, because I'm starting right now. To the good people at Precious Cat Magazine, congrats on another knockout issue. Just when I thought cats could not get more precious, you give us Miss Fancy Paws. I would like to double my subscription if that's a thing you can do. Time's up. Okay, now I'm just going to do a quick editorial review of your work. And here's how you did. Raj didn't even try. <laughs> Dying is better? Okay, bro. <laughs> crazy. That's crazy, bro. Let's try another one. Where is the oldest university in Europe? Read you. Feet was sus because the rest was. Not, I get, yeah. Why do I feel like it's this? Who picked this? I went England. The rest of you who are still alive. Bologna. It's time. It's time Donation. for donations. Give money to each other. The person who ends up with the most money will die. But if you mm. give to someone with $800 or more, I'll kill you instead. Begin. 
<laughs> Brainer is affecting me. Time for a credit check. <laughs> they say you can never be too rich. Let's but go. You sure proved that wrong. <laughs> GG. Spend. Game is game. Yeah, you should have. We're here. When one player is left alive, we'll go to the final round. Okay. Next question. What is mincemeat pie usually filled with these days? There'll be fruit. It's the classic game, Chalice. Damn, bro. Oh, 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 no. your poison in. <laughs> Good luck, Mystic. <laughs> We're cooked. Mm. Oh, shit. Now it's your turn to play. Fuck you mean, no, you there was so many people putting poison. Hot tip. A poison chalice will kill you. Uh. Uh. Oh. Salud. Now let's see what everyone drank. I went mid. Oh, there was yeah. a middle. Now that's what I'm talking about. I died. Guess the luck was on Mystic side. It was you, I got yours. Perfect. I wrote this next question just for you. If you get it right, I will punish everyone else. Just for Mystic? Wait, what? Which of these ominous warnings is correct? That's different. Bro wants Mystic dead. Gone. And the correct answer is... What Did the you get fuck? the question right? You succeeded! What the, the fuck? The rest will suffer. What the fuck is this? No, this is I rigged. With instructions. Mystic Follow bait the host. As you can before time runs no, out. this is rigged. Everyone else is playing too. What if the fuck? If any of them correctly follow more rules than you, I will kill you. Proud teacher moment. The rules are already on your device. Go, go! I instantly got it wrong. Sometimes I worry that I say the word rules too much during this game. Rules, rules, rules. Yeah, maybe I'm overthinking it. Rule time is coming to an end. Oh, GG, Johnny. I got the you got most. Outruled. You know, that's surprising. Is <laughs> a gambler? Only one of you is still alive. Baby Rig, you're not playing. <laughs> you know what that means. No, Mystic Greg at all, bro. <laughs> what the fuck was that? That was actually Rig. You've made it so far. Let's kill but it. can you escape? Here's your first category. Arthropods. You better win now, Tap Mystic. each answer that fits the category, and then press submit. Ah, uh, bro, I have no clue. Time is almost up. What is an anthropod? Let's see the right answers. Spider millipede, apparently. Walking Dead characters. I I think I know it. Time is almost up. Wait, isn't it? Oh, I thought it was all of them. Yeah, I'm here. Here comes the ghosts. 
launched online before 2000. Hey. I'm selling. Next question. Swimming strokes. Hey, yo. Hey. Oof. Wow. None of them. Uh oh, here comes Box. trouble. It's only darkness. Taller than the Eiffel Tower. Time is almost up. We had it before. It's the CN Tower. A lot of lucky guesses. Countries with red, white, and blue flags. Easy. Yo. Point four. Yikes, there's a g -g -g ghost right behind you. Crayola crayon shades of brown. Bro from Goraba, Australia. Mystic is real close. Animals in Animal Farm. Uh, the fuck? Time is almost up. I'm going too easy on you. This will slow you down. If you want to break through that barrier, you'll need a perfect answer to this question. And that includes the third answer I don't choice now, know. too. You have to get all the right answers to escape. Yeah, it's truly Ooh, rigged and mystic. You stole some yummy life force. Clouds. At least Mystic didn't win. Still rigged? Nah. Yeah, that was like... That was rigged though. Could have been a rare thing? No, this was not rare. No one had any items. I would push the button. There's a lot of us right now. Uh, what y'all want to play? Play the phone. Fuck is the phone? Loading time? Quiplash. Go before you fucking die. <laughs> Please don't die. Alright, take care, Luca. Peace out. Glad to see you doing... Something. Uh, what is Raw John play GTA 6 to? Yeah, let me play GTA 6 real quick. Almost anvil. <laughs> Bro, it's on thick girl repacks. What? 
<laughs> no, what is raw smoking? It's on Fit Girl Repacks. What is that supposed to mean? I don't wait for you. We got Mystic, Sabin, Spam, Johnny. I think that's all. Illiterate much. Sure. If you don't know, get the safe answer. Schmitty here. My Better trick knee is acting up again, which means there's a quick Who's flash Gabe? of ruin. Gabe. Good group, good group. Oh, we got Gabe. I hope we're all friends after Hello, this. Gabe. This is round oh, one. In the you last get second. two prompts on your device. Just answer them however you want. Your responses, or quips, will be pitted against someone else's, Bird -burger. and everyone will vote on their favorite. You score based on the percentage of players who like your answer. Plus, there are winner's bonuses at stake. Go! They're knocking pathetic. No kid team, man. Thirty five seconds. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what we cooked. All right, let's get to it. First off, a rejected less scary title for the movie Jaws. Mouse. Okay, vote for your favorite. Big Mouse. Didn't cook shit. Uh, I guess that one. Cause it's a jaw. It's one shark. So big mouth. Not mouths. Right, it makes more sense. Oh well. Next on Knitting the list, patterns are cool. The I guess. Abducting you. Too away. fat. Hell had a beam. My penis was too. Okay, brother. Too pretty to break. Yeah, that's cat. <laughs> I <laughs> we were all like, yeah, that's cat, bro. We ain't going with that. Next in line, the worst topping to put on a cake. Get Bill, how's that even Marmite? At least Marmite makes sense. How do you... Alright, I'll take it. He was lying sus? What? Next one. If Michigan is shaped like a hand, Texas should be shaped like a blank. A tax bill? Like Load a house. Your devices. You know, I was expecting a penis. Um... You know, they both make no sense. Wouldn't that be like a body part? I didn't vote. He did had it in my well I would have voted that. L me. Okay, next Bro, one. they both made no sense. Would be terrifying to notice in the background of a selfie. Put in your votes. The little girl from Cry. From Cry. The night. I don't know. You must vote. I cannot vote. Oh, 9 11 wins.
And next is, you know you're going crazy when you hear the Rice Krispies say blank. Make cereal time. great again. Swallow me no need for milk. 9-11 happened on your butt cheeks. What? I'll take it. Round one is in the books. Let's see the scores. Okay. Spam pull. <laughs> you got zero. It's I'm now feel time bad for, for round two. Everything is worth double, twice as much. <laughs> You're gonna care the other side. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Are you serious right now, bro? Time's running out. Use a safety quip if you need it. The yeah, ice hold. Who was that? Let's start this show. First up, a cocky thing that was to do on your first day working at Victoria's Secret. <laughs> okay, use your device to pick your favorite. I would wear a bikini from Victoria's Secret. Put a butt plug in the <laughs> cocky thing to do. I don't think a butt plug is cocky. Oh well, they got two votes now. Next, a good talk to yell at the zoo elephants. You fucking Time fat fuck, big fat nuts, bitch. Your trunk is smaller than mine and I'm white. What? percent of all cargo pants pockets. Why am I getting clapped? By who? Okay, vote. Sweet acrobatel. Poor poise moment. What are these answers? <laughs> Me and Spam. <laughs> hey, safety gang. Yeah, I had no clue what to put there. I Coming feel you, bro. <laughs> an ordinary melon baller can also be used for blank. Uh, and vote. Eating dogs in Springfield, Ohio. <laughs> Crazy life hack. Is. Next in the hopper, a catchphrase you'd probably hear on a sitcom called The Poop Family. Poop Family. They are Poop like now. us, smelly and not wanted. It's fair actor. Uh -huh. 
Ah, that was safe. No, 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 no. <laughs> All in to safety. Moving on. How the view will finally end. Mark will Ready, forward set, and the earth will explode. Crazy ending. With your mom and dad dying. Damn. I had no clue, so I. Uh, okay. <laughs> Got something. <laughs> it's a fart ending. No, the We've fart ending the end was funny. Round two. Let's see what happened. Johnny. First place. This is round three, the last lash. A Everyone pick fart. a name at the uh, same prompt this time. Acro. Comic better, bro. Come up with the phrase this acronym stands for. WHF. So that gonna stand for something. You accidentally oh you sold thirty seconds with some bullshit. Something a bit good, okay. <laughs> Fifteen seconds. Uh ten seconds. You sold? You sold. Let's see the responses. It's round three, so you've got three White medals to house award. Fucking. A gold, a silver, and Why a bronze. Make friends? your picks. White hungry femboys. W Hitler. What? Horse. Whore hoes fucked. Um. They're all kind of, I guess. Sure. Say yes or no, choose one. What? Fuck does that mean? No. All right, let's see who earned those medals. Bronze. Silver. And the gold. Great. Let me just turn those medals into points for you. Really? I saw. Huh. Mystic. What? That's the game. Right. Let's see the final scores. No. Gabe. I remember I had gay bitches. No drawing tomorrow? Fuck you. <laughs> what? Alright, voting time. Um, put on guess. Hmm. Go joke uh, roll uh, murder voting time. No, uh, don't vote. Same as having a uh, uh, drown syndrome. <laughs> what? Wait, what was that? Oh, Tico or roll models? I don't even know you. What you want roll? Oh wow. 
Everything is one. Oh, nope. Joke is two. What the fuck? <laughs> Joke one. Um, I guess we do joke. Yeah. And I guess we vote again after that, cause uh, <laughs> a lot of ones. Welcome aboard. I'm Chuck Hull, the ship's captain and MC. Grab your dummy and sign in. Some tell me that's not. We don't have happen. all day. Um, we got Bean, we got Spam, Sabin, Jam, Mystic. Johnny? Let's move it, people! What? You're bad at jokes? I beat Sabe here. I think Johnny left. We don't have all day! Eight. No, it's eight now. Can someone start the countdown? Yup, appreciate it. Or I count up. Count to ten. Toot, toot, we gotta scoot. Toot, toot, we're gonna scoot. You've got time for one or two more. If you haven't started your second joke yet, now would be the time. <laughs> Ew! Penis!
Time's almost up. I'm about to come. Uh, a little something about me. I recently we'll got see. married. To the sea! <laughs> and you thought you had a salty wife. All joking aside, I've never felt the touch of a woman. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, we've got a great lineup tonight. Let's start things off with the first two comics. Uh, uh. Alright, saving. Remember to uh, say your uh, catchphrase. Uh. I call my bedroom the cornfield because it's my corn place. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> Bro, what was that? All right, Jam. What you got? Hi, Mr. Abtua. What's the difference between most people and Ridley's? Who's loud like music that rhymes make up 13% yet does half the crimes. Okay, judges, render your verdict. America. That got me stun locked. I didn't vote. <laughs> Bro made a riddle. That stun locked me. <laughs> GG. Let's keep it going for our next comic. <laughs> that stun locked me. Alright, Bean. I'm so dumb I thought. Oh, shut up, bitch! Alright. Uh, have you ever tried manginaing? That's when you tuck your pee pee and make it look like a vagina and your friends fuck you. Vote for the joke um, you liked the best. It does say it, though. You could see what he tried to do, though. You're very funny, Bean. Both good. I'm guessing I, I can see where this gonna go through. All right. Well, I guess this is and it. Last round. To you. GG. Because this Want is all gonna comedy? be racist well, shit after this. Here it comes. I hope you're happy. I right, Mystic. A group. <laughs> and start twerking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably the new guys. Yeah. Marriage is a lot like what the fuck is even that shit. Confusing. It is confusing. I mean, it's the new guys, but... Yeah. It's funny. Are you laughing? Yeah, who would have guessed? Okay, up next. Nice, right, spam. I guess we're doing guess after this. I'm a nasty little woman. Because I blame men for anything wrong I do. Smell my pussy for it. No, they're gonna join. It's cooked. I had to do a Twitch only, but then they'll cook it. Your screaming was like Tyrone. Yeah. So funny.
No, there's a Jam Baleva guy. Jam is another guy. Audience as well. We got more hot comedy coming up right yeah, now. Yeah, there's more of them. It was like four of uh, them. It's so funny, bro. What's the how? Qual as a try as a qual be. Yeah, real funny. Did to a C D A C to a B to a. Yeah. Great. I mystic. Honestly, I'm not even surprised because uh, those things happen. Beast and my dad. What? Close to love, you for real? Yeah, after this round, I'm closing it. Right there. But Mystic, why did you choose the option? Was there no better ones? You have like three options. Yeah, you, yeah. You see, the audience is voting as well, so and there's more. Points for you as well. No, I. I mean, he could Keep be. That applause going I'm not for sure. Our next comedian. Because the audience is voting as well. My family is like Gordon Ramsay. Whatever I do, they always yell at me. <laughs> Ones were like Toyota and pizza. Then why not get Toyota and pizza? Why you gotta pick the racist one? They call zombie porn and not drug addiction porn. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. Cause it's a drugs and uh, you pick the n-word one. What do you mean, bro? I saw it. You have three options and you pick the third one. Well, well, well. <laughs> All right, Mystic. Game is game. <laughs> You start to sound like okay, uh, you chemical. Jokers. Let's tally the scores. It's probably Bean and Jamba. If you're at the bottom, fret not. We're all mortal souls who will eventually perish. You can ban both of them. I don't care. Oh, he did. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see. Um. Murder, not nah, murder could be. Could there's drawing as well. Um, guess guess doesn't have a drawing. We'll do one round of guess. Now they still could be in here though. That's the thing. You're not really, really sure if they stayed or. Yeah. Mystic say the end word. Well, that that was the option, and he picked it. But uh, yeah. Bro, say game is game. <laughs> Wait, did Mystic got banned? <laughs> now he got time out. It. All agents, please do not. Now he move got time out. It upsets Agent Waller. Nah, they're just gonna troll. Yeah, nah, they're probably just gonna sit there, and then oh, the time is just gonna go. It's gonna, they're gonna let the time, yeah. Oh well, I mean it's ten minutes to end my stream anyway. <laughs> um, I guess we're doing reaction Monday. We're continuing it. Oh well. It happens.
Not my if there's one thing either. worse than preachy egotistical celebrities, it's preachy egotistical journalists. As the mainstream media continues to lose its grip on power with the rise Soon that one. Pitra paka pita. Mai sa kai siulestusta. Mix. Or actually no, true. We could do Discord. Should we do that right now? Fuck it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Uh, should I post in general? No, they could go general. VIP. My Mystic will not see the... Mystic won't see the code though. What do we play? Murder. Roll. Oh yeah, it could be in a private role. True. Guess. One at a time. Are you getting harassed? Um, N word. Uh, Funny, funny racism. I'm getting that. The the the, uh, the classic. I guess. I need to do the um. Hide the code thingy in the settings. Uh. Hey, Warren, can you do me a huge favor? I'm not calling the State Department. Come on, I don't have an ex-girlfriend who works there. Why? I need an autographed headshot of Colin Powell circa 2002. Discord. It's for my niece. I already got her a Madeleine Albright. What is she, a collector? She's 15. It's a phase. It's her birthday. Fine, but you owe me three Pentagon favors, understood? I don't know anyone at the I'll Pentagon. I'll put it in VIP. It happen. Um... Okay, and Sabin will DM the code. Uh, that makes no sense. Okay, it makes that works. Makes perfect sense. All soda is called Coke until you need to be specific. So you tell a waitress, give me a Coke. And I'll get a Coke. But if I'm saying I'm going to go get a Coke, you might get a Mountain Dew. Exactly. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. It happens. Breathe it in. Alright. I can put my streamer mode on, but I don't want to pay attention to them. Right. They just want me to pay attention to their oh, yeah. Since so they, they think it's funny. Right. Right. Don't right. say the C words anymore, it's so hateful stupid for right now. Little, little fucking 11 year olds. Haha, <laughs> racism. Group chat. <laughs> Uh, control for deleted. A reminder We're good. All Hi, Saban Mystic. Must be reported. Granted, we are well aware oh, of oh, them. Oh, spam. We just want to hear you say it. Rods can join as well, but I guess he doesn't want to. I mean, Rod should s able to see it in the um, VIP, right? But do you want to play or no? We've used these two tiny surveillance microphones hundreds of times, so you swallow this one. Okay. Okay. And no. what about the other one? Three. That one two, is a suppository. One. Or wait. You see, that's um, why sometimes. Hey, okay. your government here. We have been kind of, sort of, collecting information about all of you. Now, before you get all angry and call your congressperson, let us make it up to you by turning it all into a game that we call. 
espionage. Uh, I don't know. Seems like every day. Let's go. Okay, who's first? Hi, Dad. No, I don't think so. All right, buckle in. I've got one for you. Liking. What percentage of people admit feeling obligated to we'll like back. friends' Facebook posts? We'll play spiritually. Make it a good guess. You'll get more um. points the closer your guess is to the actual percentage. We have an answer. 24%. 24, really? Okay, everyone else. Zero. Time to guess if the actual percentage is higher or lower. I feel like it's higher, though. Breathe it in. <laughs> One of you thinks it's higher. Really? Even the lower? Right answer. I mean, boomers? Yeah, exactly. 62%? This is for people who use the Facebook. You need to be within 30% to get points. Who said higher? Nice job. I've got some points. Yeah, imagine it was zero. Next up. Foolish. Typey, typey. What percentage of people would prefer to go through their entire lives barefoot? Thirty-five percent. Okay, higher or lower? And the correct answer is... 36%! One Bro. percent. Can't do much Save better it. than that. Is this thing broken? No, you were all just wrong. Good fucking guess. Who's next? Secrets. Oh, here's one we've been especially <laughs> interested in. Don't ask why. What percentage of people have taken piano lessons? Hmm. 38%. Okay, higher or lower? Can't believe you know. No, no. I don't think so. Running out of time. Oh. Breathe it in. It's unanimous again. And Surveil says. Sure, it's. 44%. And strangely enough, most of them don't hate their parents. Wait, spam still has zero. Yikes. <laughs> no one guessed correctly. Oof. Okay, who's up next? No, it's global. Breathe it in. We have definitive proof here at the agency, but tell me. What percentage of people believe that there are aliens out there somewhere in the universe? I mean... 30%. I feel like it was somewhere there. The universe, it is big. You're almost out of time. I feel like it was somewhere in 80. Everyone else, higher or lower? 50? It was a 50. Hi, Dad. Really? Okay, let's see the right answer. Oh, I forgot then. Nope, I didn't. I remembered. Ooh, it was somewhere 80. Percentage points off. Well, 85, done. I'll take it. Wow, everyone was wrong. Yeah. We made it through <laughs> round one. Let's peek at the scores. Hi, Dad. This <laughs> fam still has zero. Round two, here no, we you're selling. <laughs> you're so Let's start with you. <laughs> He's browning. Ooh, I remember seeing good surveillance for this yesterday. Shit. Pickles. Alright. 
Oh, I love pickles. What percentage of people typically eat the pickle that comes with restaurant sandwiches? No sandwiches. <laughs> kitty! We have an answer. Where is the kitty? 66%. Kitty! You can double down if you think the guess is off by 15% or more. Just pick much higher or much lower. If you're correct, your mama's mm. little angel. You get double the points. Sure. I'm gonna go higher. Only one of you thinks it's higher. Okay, right answer is. Yeah, they are good. 63%. I've got big points for that guess. Uh. Yeah, I would eat that. Let's see who got it right. I mean, true. Well done. You get points. Fuck. Next up. You got points, so you're back. Sorry, officer, I was speeding because it's fun. <laughs> what percentage of people have tried talking police officers out of ticketing or arresting them? Running and shitting. Ain't that the same thing? Zero. Okay, you're trolling. Burps are farts too. True. What do y'all think? Higher I or burp, lower? so I, I rarely fart. Um, why do I feel like it's higher? No, there's no way it's no lower. Just there's no way it's higher. higher. And the correct answer there's is. No yeah, gotta be 38%. Right. Excellent answer. Points for you. Still a lot, though. Who got it right? Ooh, points for you. And what have we here? Ah, that's too bad. Double downs only count if the answer is off. Oh, it even shows the code. I guess it shows the code if we're playing. Who's next? So, Goofy at pointing. We've collected data about everything, Good at even pointing. this. Wait, what? Relative humor. What percentage of people have older relatives who routinely forward them jokes via email? Email? I would get it like WhatsApp or something. 15%. What do y'all think? Or higher or lower? Foolish humans. I prefer facts. Um. You know, I'm going lower. Just one of you is saying higher. It could be like okay, one digit. Let's see the right answer. Fuck. 29%. It's the same relatives who forward urban myths before you refute them using Snopes.com. Let's see who got it right. Nice job. I've got some points for you. Okay, who's up next? Breathe it in. What should I search for in the old Surveillance Pro next? Ooh, I know. Peanut butter and jelly. Wait, we had it. We had this one. What percentage of people regularly purchase peanut butter and jelly packaged together in one jar? Oh wait, no. We didn't have this one. We had a different one. Both in one jar. That gotta be low. Lower. Look at this music. Horn fold. What the You're almost fuck? out of time. Uh 31%. Like, okay, 31. Everyone pick. Higher That's or lower. That's crazy, Raj. Foolish humans. Secrets. Only one of you thinks it's higher. And Way so high. says. Interesting. 3%. The Bible prohibits what? wearing clothing of two woven fabrics. I think it's the same principle. One digit number. Was not expecting that. Who got it right? Well done. You get points. Maybe, uh, if anything, like 15 or something. 
Uh-oh. Said <laughs> code zero. Time. Yeah, that would have been closer. social media, we found the most popular answers <laughs> to this question. Closer. What item do people most often forget when they walk out the door? Let's see what people um, think. Hmm. But only the top three answers will get you points. Ooh, good luck. There's some good ones. Fuck, can I take it back? I can't. I could. I sold. I sold. Okay, let's see what you picked. Gotta be keys, wallet, hey, and uh, the most popular answers? cell phone. Yeah. I sold. I went with lunch. Brother. Why can't I go back? This bullshit. Every game has to have a winner, and our winner Come on, is... Case. Got milk again. <laughs> Coming for seconds. It took my and my, my soul. My. Seeing this game played like you did really warms my cockles. And you, did you, know you got the second milk too, know of course. Are. Hey, Mystic. GG. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna wrap it up now. It is what it is. Oh well. You're browning me right now. Time to raid. Let's see. Anyone to raid? Um ATP if anyone. Oh, you're gonna check madness? Guess I'll check chat box. Maybe soda popping. Oh, if no one cat. else. They have the cat as a mascot. I know. I know it's worth it. <laughs> this guy's so strong with friendly. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. But what's with the VTubers, man? I said like AIDS. Wow. It's like cancer that's spreading. You got none. I'm not sure. What the fuck make... is this? No. Hello, Michael. Michael? Mike. Oh, I see. Um. Bro got a screen screen. Third. Game. No idea. I'm like at the end of the day, mate. I'm here till. Low audio, bro. What? This is Homer Simpson. Brug Burger. Brug Burger. You're him, yo. That fella. Literally what it was called, but you. Can Put Brock Berg on it. Wait, Loki, I should. In future. Yeah, I don't really feel like no one really stand out. I'll try Poke Lols, maybe, if I can. Over as well. What's the chat? Seems like there's no sub needed. Oh. Or follow. Right, let me see if I can raid him. Huh? Oh, he has like follower only. Oh well. Cancel. Follower only. Um, the fuck do I? I feel like we got no one then. No raid. I guess so.
What? <sighs> Shit in my ass. Yeah, how I'm gonna find someone playing pressure? I pull the Roblox category. I'll be I'll be there like, bro, a one hour to find someone playing pressure. <laughs> Brother. All right. Well, as always, love, yeah, all yeah, 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 love all your mentors. Hope you enjoyed your uh, stay. You'll find one that fast. Really? Oh, what? That fast? Um, waiting. No camera. Alright, best of luck to them. Let's see how they do. Why are you... What the fuck? The text changed for a second. I mean, you can chat, but no camera. care about spoilers I don't know I'm, I'm wrapping it up it is what it is all right love all, all y'all hope you enjoyed your stream and I'll uh, see y'all tomorrow gay, so, gay, 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 gay. you're not that Peace guy out. pal trust me you're not that guy I'm not that guy but uh I am that fella but yeah Penis. peace out and a good night